back to UMBC Stadium. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this game. First of all, Mark, the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens. The Blue Hens, of course, come into this game 6-2. and two. Uh, We have Matt Ulrich. We already profiled him. Cam Howard, a freshman out of Delaware. Andy Hipple, the junior. And it's a midfield for the uh, Delaware Blue Hens. Ryan Metzauer, senior out of St. Mary's, headlines the group. We have uh, Jordan Hall, redshirt freshman from Canada. Ryan Overs, he's a senior, six goals and five assists on the year. Defensively for the Blue Hens, they're a small unit but ranked fourth in the nation. Chris Willis, a junior out of Miami. Ryan Drummond, a senior. And Ian Wright, a junior out of Denver. And between the pipes for the Blue Hens, Chris Collins, he's the junior. 64% save percentage on the uh, on the year. He's from Yorktown Heights, New York. All right, there you have the Blue Hands. We'll get the UMBC starting lineup, but right now players are lined up for the uh, playing of our national anthem. Keith, how about uh, the starting lineup for Don Zimmerman's Retrievers? Yeah, anchoring the attack, we just mentioned him, number 13, Brendan Mundorf. He's a sophomore from Mount St. Joe. He'll be joined by number 24, Corey Warner, a transfer from Herkimer Junior College in New York. He uh, put up some big numbers in junior college. And number 26, Drew Westerfeld, outstanding freshman from John Carroll in Bel Air. We'll be talking a lot about him. First team midfield, Joe Cahill, junior from Lewis, Delaware. Franklin Berry, a senior from Mount Everett and James Highland, a sophomore from St. Mary's in Annapolis. On defense, Brad Preisinger, the junior, also from Mount Hebron. Luke Powell, sophomore from uh, New Hampshire. And number 21 is David Donahue, also a junior college transfer from Catawba Junior, junior College via St. Mary's High in Annapolis. And in the net, number 12, Kevin Tepelin. All right, and Mark was up late last night working on the Baltimore County Savings Bank. Keys of the game. What do you got, Mark? Well, for the Delaware Blue Hens, they've got a peck on Mustin, and that's Pat Mustin, the face-off specialist for the UMBC Retrievers, winning 75% of his draws. They need great wing play to get some possession. And the Hot Hens, leadership and discipline. Bob Schillinglaw talked about the likes of Allrich, of Collins, of Metzbauer. He likes the chemistry of the team, and it all starts with his upper-class leadership. For the UMBC Retrievers, they have to cook the bird. They lose Andy Gallagher. They have to finish on offense whatever opportunities they can get from this stingy Delaware defense. And Don Zimmerman affectionately refers to this field as the dog pound. And in order to be successful today, steady team defense and protecting the pound is important for the UMBC Retrievers. All right, pecking and cooking. And when we come back, UMBC and Delaware, our game of the week, the Toyota Faceoff is next. The 2004 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships are returning to Baltimore. Enjoy hard-hitting, heart-pounding action as the nation's top Division I, II, and three teams battle for NCAA supremacy. It all happens at MNC Bank Stadium this Memorial Day weekend, May 29th through the 31st. For tickets, call the Ravens Ticket Office at 410-261-RAVE or visit lax4baltimore.com for more information. The 2004 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. Be there. When the doctor told us we were having squintruplets, that 
22. We thought he was joking. With four other kids and us, that's 28 different people to please. That's why we signed up for Comcast Digital Cable with On Demand and Stars. We get hundreds of channels and a free library of on demand movies and shows. And now with Stars On Demand, we get over 100 hit movies free each month. So now everyone gets more. Even Charlie. Order Comcast Digital Cable and get Stars free for six months. Call 1 877 Comcast. Welcome back to UMBC Stadium. Scott Garceau, Keith Mills, Mark Dixon. UMBC, ranked number 14. They're 2-2 two two on the... How about Delaware? They've already played eight games. Dude, they got a season in. Halfway through the season in Delaware, 6-2. and two. UMBC, 2-2. Two and two. They lost to Duke in an opener, 11-8. Came back, beat Ohio State and Hartford, and then lost to Maryland, 9-4. Alex Smith, the freshman from Boys Latin, wins the drive and is checked away by Mustin, but Delaware retains possession. Two good face-off guys here. Mark mentioned Pat Mustin. And just under 76% number two in the nation. The senior out of Novi, Michigan, getting it done, just being really the MVP thus far in the early season for UNBC. Can you see, Mark? You're kind of cornered here. <laughs> yeah, there's rails and boards around. I feel like I'm in a treehouse, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> hey, it's not raining. That's, that's, that's a good thing. So Delaware on the attack. The blue hands in the dark blue. The retrievers in the home white. Rich Howard and Hipple, the attack for Delaware. 17, 12, and six goals respectively for those three. Rich with 17 goals, eight assists. Howard, 12 goals and eight assists. Oh, and wide open right out in front is Matt Allrich for the easy layup. Nice play by, De excuse me, Keith, nice play by Delaware that time. Just, uh, Keith seemed to lull the defense of uh, UMBC to sleep a little bit, got a move, and then the backside collapsed, and Allrich just stepped right in and took the beautiful feet. I was going to say, Mark, was this a breakdown because Allrich was uncontested, wide open? I think the thing with Delaware is they're very methodical, they're very patient offensively, so maybe UMBC thought that that exchange was going to happen behind the goal as opposed to cross creep like that. They didn't mark on Allrich as tight as they had to, and he's wide open. Ryan Overs with the assist to set up the goal, and here comes Smith again winning the draw. Turnover for Delaware, but Alex Smith impressive in the early going. The freshman from Boys Latin, three-year midfielder at BL. You look at Don Zimmerman. And of course, Delaware has to be really happy with the face-off work of Alex Smith early on. But there on that last play, you saw the value of Pat Mustin. He lost the face-off, which he's not used to losing, but his hustle was able to disrupt the feed from Smith to the point man. He creates the turnover, ball out of bounds, and UMBC gets their first possession of the afternoon. Now the Retrievers try to clear. The aggressive play by the long stick midfielder for Delaware. Delaware's had some dandies over the years. Uh, most recently, John Filiberto was an All-American via X Community College at the long pole midfield position for Delaware. James Highland with it up front. We've watched Franklin Berry Keith for yeah. four years. Uh, he's, the only, he's the only midfielder on UMBC with multiple goals. So you can see they've had trouble scoring. Most of their stuff comes up front from the attack. Really haven't scored a lot with the midfielders. And now without Gallagher, Scott, well, that, that, that whole offensive system will be really challenged the rest of the year. But again, anytime you lose a player, it's an opportunity for someone else to step up. Don Zimmerman commented this week, guys, that Brendan Mundorf is, and Andy Gallagher were options 1A and 1B with Gallagher's injury. Uh, Mundorf becomes number one. There's a shot on goal from Barry, but Chris Collins up to it. Collins, a junior from Yorktown Heights, New York, where they put out some players over the years. When you think about Yorktown, you think about uh, the Marr brothers, Scott Marr, David Marr, Roy Colty from Sarah Hughes, Tom Finn, the list just goes on and on. Brian Hopkins, Harris, John Hopkins. It's a great program up there uh, in New York. One nothing early going here. Delaware with the lead on the Matt Ulrich goal. And here we see Delaware with the lead early on. They can their first shot opportunity. And again, this is a very methodical offense that you will see incorporated by Bob Schilling. While time of possession, he mentioned, is one of the real keys to the success today, winning that battle. Because when you're going up as a faceoff guy like Muskin, you have to value your possessions anytime you get them and limit turnovers. Howard comes up top. Mark, does Don Zimmerman recruited you and then left to come, you know, left and then came here a couple years later. 
Is this defense similar to what he used to run in Hopkins? Obviously, the personnel is not, but same same philosophy. I think uh, Coach Zimmerman, a lot of times, uh, he gives a lot of credit to Brandon Testa, right. his defensive coach. Coach Zimmerman around lacrosse circles is known more as the offensive mind, um, and he gives a lot of leeway to his defensive coach. And here we see a, a nice shot opportunity again by Allridge. Uh, but he puts a lot of confidence in, to his defensive coach, John Hoss at Johns Hopkins, and now uh, what you have over here at UMBC with Testa. So I think uh, he's open-minded about it, but he likes to play a really aggressive style. Of course, Scott, two Hopkins grads are helping Zimmerman. Bob Benson, yeah. who was an All-American last couple years at Hopkins, is now on the staff here at UMBC as well. Great crease attack. Mm -hmm. And of course, John Zimmerman's first defensive coordinator, guys, was Bill Kearney. Yeah, the head coach at Princeton while he Pretty was... Pretty good uh, guy to have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say. Allrich fires from a tough angle. Allrich, uh, 46 shots on the year, 17 goals, 37%. Not a bad shooting percentage. 17 goals, 8 assists. Matt Allrich, the senior from Calvert Hall. It's hard to believe, Scott and Mark. Zim's been here now for... This is his 11th year yeah. already. And UMBC, UMBC seems like he just got here. Yeah. He's a terrific coach. Yeah. National championships at Johns Hopkins. Then he was an assistant at Loyola College, and now pretty long possession here. Yeah. Nice defense there. Luke Powell with the steal for uh, UMBC, and that's a big turnover. <laughs> and a nice clear by the retrievers. So big play from Luke Powell, the uh, sophomore from Hampton, New Hampshire. And after that little bit of a, a blip in the screen, if you will, and that first goal by Delaware, the defense for UMBC settling down. They can't let... Delaware law them to sleep or let them become complacent. And I think that's what Don Zimmer means by solid, steady defense. Keep playing the way that they've been playing. Just saw Drew Westerfeld, Scott, big 6'4 freshman from, from John Carroll, led the uh, John Carroll team to the B Conference Championship last year, and he had a monster, monster senior year. One of the best ever in Baltimore High School across. And what a great coup for uh, for UMBC to get him. No it's question. Already won a Rookie of the Week honors. Yeah. Had a three-goal game against Hartford. Trying Ooh. to turn the corner, Mundorf, and a penalty marker's down. Free possession here for UMBC. They'll get the ball back regardless. They see oftentimes guys go out and attack them like that, work as point guards in basketball. They make their way to the goal, and if they can't make something happen by scoring or getting an assist, they at least draw a foul. And if in basketball, you go to the foul line and lacrosse, it's an extra man opportunity. Mundorf gets dumped as he goes down low. Defense knocks it down, but now the penalty be, will be assessed. I like the patience on the UMBC offense, and uh, with Brent uh, Mundorf drawing that foul, it's just nice and patient. Here you see he can go to the goal. He knows he has a free shot. Nice inside roll, but good positioning by Collins to take away his angle and gobble up that shot. Beautiful inside roll. Felt the pressure of the defense. He overplayed him a little bit. Got inside, but Collins again, he's there uh, as a fortress guarding the goal. We've got a timeout. Delaware with a 1-0 lead. 9-19 to play in the first quarter. It's all new from Toyota. A full-size four-door with room for a family of five. It's Toyota's all-new Big Rig, the Tundra Double Cab, featuring all of Tundra's best. A smooth, quiet ride, the strength of iForce V8 power, built to last quality. And now Tundra is longer, wider, and taller to give you full-size four-door convenience and comfort. Need a powerful truck and a refined SUV? Now you can get both on one set of wheels. Tundra Double Cab, only at your Toyota dealer. You're late. Late. You were supposed to be here 10 minutes ago. Had to get the bus. Besides, 10 minutes is in late. 10 minutes is running behind. 10 minutes is late. Anything after 15 is late. Anything under, running behind. 10 minutes, running behind. You look hot. Sorry. Let's go. I can't. Why not? I'm not ready. <sighs> now we're gonna be late. Sorry? You look great. Thanks. Team to play first quarter. Delaware with a one nothing lead over UMBC. And the Retrievers with the extra man. They've hit eight of 19 this year. 42% pretty good numbers. That's a real good number. And offensive coordinator Bobby Benson, as you mentioned, Keith, John Hopkins graduate of 2003. Helped lead the Blue Jays to the national championship game a year ago. 
Warner and Westerfeld, uh, both with multiple goals on the extra man for the Retrievers. A little change out front here. A lot of motion, a lot of movement. We're in a 1-4-1, now they're in a 3-1-2, three, three, looking for that cutter on the crease area. And James Highland got, he's got a bazooka oh, little shot. Good defense there by Delaware. Yeah, they got, cover. they got the pass, but there's really nothing yeah. there. 30 second foul on that for the hold on the Delaware defense, and Delaware successfully kills it off without UNBC uncorking a yeah. shot. So Delaware has to feel good about that extra man defense. Fighting Blue Hands with a one nothing lead. They came in six and two. Nice and shot. there's a shot in the score. James Highland, the sophomore from St. Mary's, ties it up at one. Highland showing some versatility. This guy has a great outside shot. And you can see Delaware that time. It's almost like leaving a three-point shooter open from that far out. But Highland recognizes that they recognize they left them open too much. The defender runs out and overcommits. And Highland just simply runs through the check. Look at that shooting motion. Look at that technique. Arms straight back off his front foot. Beautiful shot by James Highland, the uh, sophomore out of St. Mary's for the UMBC Retrievers. His second goal of the year in a battle here. Mustin and Whoa. Smith diving. Oh, man. Mustin <laughs> diving head on. And Scott will say that UMBC's uh, face-off coach the last couple of years over here, Brian Lawton, great player at Broadneck a few years ago. His sister, uh, great player, Kim, at, at Loyola. And uh, you know, he has had, he's quietly done a real good job over here, has he not, Mark, with face-off guys? No question. And it just seems year in and year out, UMBC just has such nice face-off oh. men. And I think what happens is guys like Lawton come back to coach, teach the techniques to the guys that are taking their place, and it's a seamless transition. Brian's dad is the athletic director at Old Mill, and uh, in the middle of another outstanding season down there in Anne Arundel County. Loose ball. And Delaware maintains possession. Nice hustle by the Delaware attack that time to win possession back. As we mentioned, Coach Schillingwall for the Blue Hens saying they just can't turn the ball over. Had UMBC been able to pick up that ground ball, that would have been two turnovers in a row for the Blue Hens. And congratulations to Bob Schillingwall. Got his 200th win at Delaware last week when they down the Air Force. And a nice defensive set there by UMBC. Two back-to-back -back, uh, turnovers forced by the Blue Hens. Oh, yeah. hit there and the flag goes down. Looks like they're going to get an illegal body check it's when that's flag day. About three <laughs> flags. Uh, would have been a uh, Under Armour Protect the it House hit of the game, but it is not legal. Then we see Donahue coming up, and he gets him right from behind as he ran by. Just a missed time right there by number 20, Jordan Hall, the freshman midfielder for UNBC. I think the Delaware coaching staff is uh, trying to say over there that the, the play was from the front, but it clearly got him from behind. He was protecting the house, but it's <laughs> illegally. <laughs> Protecting the hen house, if yeah. you will. <laughs> the hen house. Very good. Donahue, as we mentioned, junior college transfer. Also went to St. Mary's. And there are a ton of St. Mary's guys playing big time college lacrosse. We're tied at one about halfway through the first quarter. And again, this will be a 30 second foul pushed from behind with possession. So you'll be have to work quickly if you want to capitalize on the 6 on 5. Mark, how many different sets do teams have an extra man? Is it Oh, and a great shot behind the back. Brandon Mundorf with a highlight reel special. Wow, thank you very much, Brandon <laughs> Mundorf. Just a beautiful shot on the feed from Drew Westervelt. They just get the ball spinning. The great ball movement by UMBC, and they get the defense for Delaware out of a spot. There's Mundorf. He runs out of real estate and just flicks it behind his back. Nice, beautiful behind-the-back goal. Again, Westervelt, quick feed inside. Mundorf doesn't feel like wow. he gets the shot off in front. Puts it around the back of his head. And the defenseman for Delaware in that case, number 40, Ian Wright, had his stick in the proper position. Yeah. And he improves the angle by and shooting it that way, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. because uh, Wright took away his angle with yeah. his stick in front. Here comes Mustin. He'll make it and take it sometimes. Take it and make it, I should say. Oh, right out in front. Oh. The defenseman, Scott, yeah. number 27, Jeff Clark, coming in for a rare chance at a goal. Good shot. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. On Good. the cage. But there's Mustin coming up with a clean save, or clean face off mark, and that created that whole offensive set. Looks like he might be now starting to, I guess, Great face-off guys are there for the duration. It's not the first two that make a game. It's how many you win overall. And, and obviously, he's, he's going to be here for this entire 60 minutes. It's, it's, not, it's not just one fight. It's an overall yeah, battle. Yeah. And a lot of times, face-off guys have to feel each other out early on. We've done six games, uh, UMBC games, on two sports. Mustin has seven of his 19 career <laughs> goals. <laughs> Big time. Now seems to play well. And, as does UMBC. I know Zim yeah. always likes us around. 
his little own good luck charm, so to speak. They've always played solid. Last year, the great win against the Army. Oh, two years ago, I should say. Big win against the Army. 2-1 UMBC, just under six minutes left. First quarter. Big in the Army. They play the Navy today up in West Point. We did that game last year. Yeah, that was, what a great game. That was a great atmosphere, wasn't it? No doubt about it. Even though the weather didn't cooperate, <laughs> tremendous afternoon. And now with Navy joining the Patriot League, we could say a key conference matchup no in addition to the uh, intense rivalry that exists between those two service academies. But Keith, you mentioned the extra man offense. Uh, I think offensive coordinators, a lot like Brian Billick uh, or Ralph Friedgen in football, I don't think they have as many plays <laughs> as Billick or Friedgen. But they have different that. formations. Sure, yeah, 3-3, sure. three, three, two, 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 one, four, one is a popular one. But I think uh, the one thing about extra man offense, the set that the team starts in, they rarely finish right, right, right. in that set. Well, you see Mundorf using that size, 5'11", 200, just kind of backing his way in, using his muscle. Mundorf, a St. Joe grad. He's related to Matt Mundorf, who was an outstanding player for Mount St. Joe back in the 1980s. Don't hear a whole lot of St. Joe in the A Conference because obviously Loyola, BL, uh, Gilman, Boys Latin have dominate the headline. Wow. He scores Another again there. <laughs> Just muscling in, using the power again. Mm. Mundorf now has 32 goals in 17 <coughs> career games. Mundorf is using his strength, and you mentioned uh, 5'11", 200 pounds, so he's not real big, but he's super strong. Just a bulldog mm. here, and then a nice spin, and he gets a step to glory. He takes the hit. And UMBC now, they're clicking offensively. And we'll take a timeout. UMBC up 3-1, 447 left in the first. Now's the time to get great Toyota value. Hey! What I like about you? You're going to like the values on Toyota trucks. There's great deals now on full-size Tundras, including V8 and all-new double cabs. Maybe you'd like a great deal on any tough Tacoma, including extra cabs and double cabs. Don't miss Toyota's nationwide sales event with legendary quality, incredible selection and value. Hey, what's not to like? Hey! You have an idea for a product or an existing product, then 60 Second Solutions wants to talk to you. You've seen our products in thousands of commercials, and now we're seeking new and original ideas for marketing. If you have a product, idea, or invention, then don't wait. Call the toll-free number on your screen today. We'll send you our free inventor kit that explains how you can get your product in front of millions of potential customers. Isn't it time for your idea? Call the toll-free number on your screen today. From the foals on the farm to the champions of the track, ABC2 brings you a fascinating glimpse into the local horse industry on Maryland Horse Breeders Thoroughbred Weekly, Sundays at noon on ABC2. Looks like we got a blue hen in the house. <laughs> a dejected blue hen right now. Shaking his head a little bit. Retrievers lead this one. UMBC up 3-1. There's something you don't see every day as a little guy with a baseball uniform out of a cross game. Weather's getting warm. Got some yeah. baseball kids are coming out. Everybody's, Everybody's coming out. Cross is starting yeah. up, so good to see this. Alex Smith wins another draw for Delaware, the freshman from Boys Latin. 61% on the year. 10th in the nation. Think he owes it all to Queen Kessler? Very little. <laughs> Big possession here for Delaware. Got the first goal of the game, but now three unanswered by uh, UMBC to this point. So we'll see what the Blue Heads can do here. Here's a good-looking freshman, Cam Howard, with the shot on goal. Freshman from Wilmington, Delaware. He was the uh, 03 Delaware High School Player of the Year and a two-time high school All-American. Bob Schillingwall really high on Howard, saying he's having a great freshman season. And really, Delaware, just like uh, all around the country, starting to get up to speed with uh, the play, level of play at the high school. You saw the shot totals right there, guys. You see six. Delaware with four. The guys are getting their shots on cage. Both goalies have made some nice saves up at this point. Nice patient clear there yeah. by UMBC. Boy, just the epitome of patience. Hey, Keith, you mentioned Mundorf graduate of Mount St. Joe. Tony Brockenmeyer, the yeah. coach there, doing a great job. Hey, keep an eye on the Gales in 2004. I think they're a real dark horse. Uh, you know, with your Loyola's mm -hmm. and your boys Latin and your Calvert Hall's. Uh, keep an eye on the Gales. I think they're going to make some noise this year. He has a difficult time uh, trying to draw some of the better players in the area. Now he's going into some places that other schools have, in the Ellicott like, City area, down even as far south as Davidsonville. Sure. Kyle 
Maryland has trouble handling that pass. He must have it back into play, and UMRC retains possession. Nice job. Yeah, and a nice, even nice play by uh, number 22 for UMBC, Rob Cross, for the ball. recognizing yeah. that that's probably Gets what he was going to do. Well, right now, time of possession in the favor mm. of the UMBC Retrievers, so that's a uh, nice play at the long pole by Delaware, and they might have something to do. And right back with it is Cahill. Good hustle by UMBC. They're going to have to try to beat the 10-second count here. Delaware scored first. UMBC three unanswered goals. Two of those, uh, the last two from Brandon Mundor. And I tell you, you touched on it, Keith. Both these uh, teams start their conference play next week, mm. so they're very focused on these games here. Big eyes on Delaware and UMBC, respectively, for both teams. Absolutely. Teams, little eyes on those uh, conference games. How about plays? Delaware? They'll have played nine games before <laughs> they get into conference. Yeah. And they're in the uh, Colonial Athletic Conference along with Towson, so they'll play Towson later on in April at Towson. Oh, a nice look and a score. The cutter open in the middle, number 22 for UMBC. Rob Cross. Hey, he deserved that because he helped make that whole possession stay alive, Mark, by reading the uh, save from inbounds and just kind of deserved to get this goal. Nice job by Rob Cross and UMBC guys. Don Zimmerman talking to him this week. They go eight deep at the midfield. Four guys interchange on the first unit, four guys on the second unit. Here's one of them, Rob Cross, that takes advantage. In the old days with the old back rack helmet, you say, <laughs> Cut to the goal when you see the laces. Well, today, when you see the cascade or the gate or whatever's on these helmets, that's when you cut. Rob Cross does it when his uh, defender turns his head to get the goal for his cut. Oh, nice play there by number 13, Mundor. Great stick work. Well, he is Drew Wright Scott. He's a horse. Yeah, he's got a low center of gravity, and he digs in. Yes, he does. Yeah, that's a good point. Difficult to knock him off his yeah. position when he gets it. This is Westerville that Keith talked about. He's got some full eyes. 6'4", 185, a freshman. He'll be filling out. And he's a good one. Like Keith mentioned, a lot of honors. First team all Metro was the Kelly Award winner for the B Conference. Led the Patriots to the B Conference Championship, knocking off Spalding. Uh, he, he has the potential to be what you call a total pack. Yeah. Size, he's got some uh, great stick work. Just, you know, like you said, Scott working on filling out and getting some more strength. He was all county in soccer and basketball yeah. as well. So you can see he's, great he's an athlete. athlete. Yep. John Carroll, another program up in Bel Air that's really kind of benefiting, I think, from the lacrosse boom everywhere. Hey, everybody can't go to Gilman and Boys Latin and Loyola and the B Conference's friends. Hey, that's where uh, Benson Irwin and Kyle Harrison played their high school lacrosse. So a lot of great schools playing this game. Under a minute left, first quarter, UMBC with a 4-1 lead. They've got possession. This is Mundorf spinning, looking inside, now backing it off. The Retrievers on a full goal run right now, so this is the type of game UMBC wants. They have nice, uh, long possessions, but they're also doing some great getting to put some pressure on this Delaware defense, right? Fourth in the nation coming in mm -hmm. here, giving up only six and a half goals a game. They're more than halfway uh, to giving up that in the first quarter. Down to 20 seconds. A lot easier too, guys, when you're doing this with a three goal lead than down one or two. Left hand shot down low. Fourteen seconds left. UMC playing a high crease, letting Westerveld go one-on-one. -on -one. He does have a man behind as a quick slide for the blue head. Down to five. Here he comes around the oh. corner. The shot to score. Mundorf muscles in again, and he has scored three straight goals. There are three of the last four. Cross had one in there. But Mundorf with a hat trick here in the first quarter with just four seconds left. Well, this is similar to basketball when you give up a cheap one at the end of the first half. Brendan Mundorf, nice play by Westervelt. As what they did, the UMBC offense, they got everybody topside, above goal line extended. Westervelt dodged, Mundorf came and filled X. So Mundorf then, took, or excuse me, Westervelt put that defense even higher and drew a quick slide over. And therefore, Mundorf was able to get topside and go above goal line extended to kick that goal. And the uh, UMBC retrievers are humming right now. Yes, they are. That's the end of the first quarter. UMBC, five unanswered goals. They lead it 5-1 after one. We'll return right after this.
More choices, better choices. No one has more sport utility choices than your Toyota dealer. Five SUVs, from RAV4, with the best gas mileage of any SUV, to Toyota's legendary top-of-the-line Land Cruiser. And in between, all with available third-row seating, there's the award-winning Highlander, the biggest, most powerful forerunner ever, and Toyota's full-size eight-passenger Sequoia. More SUVs, better SUVs. Toyota. Tired of waiting in line? Then start banking online with Baltimore County Savings Bank. Visit VaultCoSavings.com, click the online banking link, and start paying bills. Check account balances, transfer funds, and more, all from the convenience of your home, 24 hours a day. So checks to write, stamps to buy, or lines to wait in. So stop banking in line and start banking online when you come home to Baltimore County Savings Bank, FDIC insured. Tired of waiting for slow internet downloads? Oh, I never noticed this button before. The fastest way to the internet now delivers even faster. Comcast High Speed Internet. Just call by 8 o'clock and we'll be over with a free self-install kit tonight. Play games, discover new music, watch movie trailers. Service is just $19.95 a month for three months. Call now and we'll be over with your free self-install kit tonight. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. What a marvelous night for the action. Let's go to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching Miss Hottie. Oh, no. Rejected. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah, no play for Mr. Gray. Get that man our just a man brush in color gel. It's specially formulated to penetrate coarse facial hair and gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. Get through the strike house, too. <laughs> just for me and Joe. The, the Rejuvenator. Take a look at the Union Memorial Hospital sports medicine stats. 5-1. The lead belongs to UMBC. Nice uh, shot total. UMBC more than 2-1 over Delaware. Face off. The Blue Heads surprisingly have the edge there, but there you see three fouls by Delaware. And when you're playing man down defense, you can't make anything happen on the offensive end. And another win for the Delaware Blue Heads on the opening draw of the second quarter. Guys also saw a stat 9-5 in ground balls and right during that quarter break, Don Zimmerman made a point, Scott, to emphasize to his team, ground balls are key, go get them. Now, Del Delaware needs a spark now. They're yeah. reeling, you know, five unanswered goals. Oh, there's a good look out front. Quick stick and a score. Beautiful pass, and Jordan Hall, the freshman from Canada, finishes for the Blue Hens to make it 5-2. Well, Scott, from your mouth to their ears, the Delaware Blue Hens making something happen, like finding a needle in a haystack. Look at the speed to get through the stick of uh, of the goalie Sepulak for UNBC, but Jordan Hall there just uses a nice play. Uh, to Cam Howard on the pass. On yeah. the pass, nice assist by Cam Howard. Beautiful look inside for uh, to Hall, and he knows what to do with it once he gets it, dumps it in the goal past Sepulak, but just a nice speed. Sepulak just inches away from stealing that. And here he is again. Smith with the draw and a quick score from Allrich. Wow. So the freshman, Alex Smith, having a great first half at the X. Lays directly to the goal from Allrich. Well, this is stealing a play out of UMBC's opening faceoff with Mustin. Smith coming down, hits the point, man. Beautiful feed, and look at the shot from Allrich. That's a beautiful shot. Plants his feet, knows that nobody picks him up, just takes a step in, and a nice low-to-low -low shot beating Sepulak. Nice form that time, and he uses this wet turf key to his advantage as it, as it skips past Sepulak, and right away, a four-goal deficit turned into two, with Delaware scoring two quick ones here in the second quarter. Oh, and some big hits going on out there now, and a loose ball, and a good clear for the retrievers. Yeah, Luke Riley picks it up and fed it back to Mustin, so big, big possession there by UMBC. Mustin will put it, oh, be careful, <laughs> almost threw it away. <laughs> That's it, you gotta watch out for those face-off guys, you never know where that pass is coming from. They got their stick all bent up and the big whips in there and stuff. So. But I didn't I didn't think guys a minute into the second quarter we'd have eight goals in this <laughs> No doubt about it. Scott, we were looking at a, maybe a 5-3 final <laughs> going into the late fourth quarter here. Yeah. Hey, it's been entertaining. Well played game offensively so far. And it's amazing once the weather breaks and you get really nice warm weather, you see a lot more goals coming because it's uh, you don't have that wind whipping up and your stick is brittle and stuff. Plus, too, Martins are a good two months into yeah. the preparation, too. A little bit more confident in terms of what they're trying to do no question Highland got that shot clang you heard the sticks 
Raffin sails wide right. UMBC retains possession. Early second quarter. Good job, good job. Most programs job, at this level, as you know, start first of January with uh, some conditioning, and then they get on the field not far after that. So yeah. it's time of the year to really start to you know, kind of get in sync. Some like Hopkins, a little farther advanced than others. <laughs> No. Blue Jays traveling down yeah, to Charlotte game tonight. Big game tonight against the defending national champs. The rematch of last year's D1 final. Huge game for Virginia, I think. Big no win question. for them last week in overtime against Towson. If they can steal one tonight, they're back in it. But I tell you what, that won't be easy. Franklin Berry, good look inside. And then Westerville dropped down. And unfortunately, Scott, when he came around, that, that negated a chance back for UMBC yeah. to back it up. So Delaware gets possession. Yeah, you said it, Keith, the best and the worst, smart enough to recognize he can come top side and get a feed, but with him cutting up like that, nobody to back up the shot. And Delaware, heady defense, running that ball out of the end line and getting possession. Collins, nice, clear to Mounier. Here come the blue hands. Ouch, knocked oh, down oh. by the defender. Oh. Never having played the game, I can only imagine what that feels like. It doesn't Whoa. feel like <laughs> that was Island that uh, took <laughs> the front of that shot, took one for the club. <laughs> 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 yeah, we just saw a graphic for the save total. Chris Collins has four stops on the day. Sepulak with one. And we've got a 5-3 ball game here. 12, just under 12 and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Talking with Bob Schillenwald, guys. You'll be happy to hear this. Uh, I was explaining to him the Channel 2 game of the week. I think Delaware's appeared in years past. Mm -hmm. He says, Mark, I live five miles yeah, from the campus. Elton, right? <laughs> yeah, and I live in Maryland. I tape all the Channel 2 games. Uh, I love what you guys do, and we're really excited to be a part of your broadcast schedule for the year 2004. Two coaches with a rich history in this sport, and Bob Schillinglaw and Don Zimmerman, uh, 224 wins for Bob Schillinglaw, two-time uh, national coach of the year taking the Blue Hens to a couple of NCAA tournaments and 12 conference titles. And, and they've been down the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of a bounce back year for them. And coincidentally, guys, uh, these guys have met in NCAA postseason play in 1999. Delaware knocked time, off right? UMBC 12-11. That was at Towson, I think. Yeah. Yeah. John Grant Jr. was a stud for Delaware. Oh, nice play. Westerveld gets it back to the Retrievers. The guys for the Retrievers back at that time, Dan Marol, Chris mm -hmm. Turner, a couple MIAA guys. UMBC's always had a, a, a lot of brothers that have seemed to come through here. The Golds, the, the Moroles, I mean, and the Hans. They're, they're, it's like brother you. Tap into them early and Absolutely. just yeah. keep bringing them in. Yeah, like the the Powell's up at Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, being a Catonsville native, my father used to bring mm -hmm. my brother and I to a lot of the games. And we remember the, the Han brothers. Oh, yeah. The days of Marty Cloud, Dave Quattrini, and the Division II battles with the Delphi and Hobart. Oh, here's a good look. And it's not the score. So UMBC answers. Jerry Salazzo fired one in. No defense in front of him. He had a great look. Set up and let her rip. Well, this is the old TNR, the time and room. When you have a chance to set your feet, pick your spot, and then just execute your shot. And Salazzo, you don't get a lot of opportunities like that, but he takes full advantage on the feed from Westervelt. The rotation for Delaware, a little bit slow coming back over to get in Salazzo's way, and he just plants his feet, picks his spot, and beats Chris Collins with a nice high-to-low shot. His first goal of the season, and guys, we're seeing cross Salazzo. Yeah. Deep depth, the old Earl Weaver, right? And Salazzo with left school last year, you see a smash there. And Must and diving. And, <laughs> and nobody Michigan guy, Scott. He can play. Had a great oh, note oh. on him, Keith. Uh, you talk about a guy being the team in high school. At Novi, uh, they had a 12-11 win, and Mustin had 11 goals <laughs> and an assist. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't he get the 12 goal? <laughs> so it's probably, uh, if Nova, other area fans familiar with... Uh, Tankersley, Josh Tankersley from Towson yeah. a couple years ago, a native of Novi. He probably may have had Keith. He, oh, yeah. had the he had, Yeah, he probably had the other 11 yeah. assists. <laughs> but Salazzo left school, went, attended some classes at Cajun Hill Community College, came back. He's also a Damascus kid like the Gallagher brothers, and uh, obviously Jim Happy, he's back. He and shot there's a turnover. Yep. UMBC leading in shots right now, 12-7. to seven. And with that 6-3 to three lead, that was a nice uh, shot by Salazzo with a big goal, guys, because uh, their scoring string was snapped with two quick scores by Delaware in the first uh, 35 seconds here in the second quarter. Play settled down a little bit, and that's a, a real big goal for UMBC to get back that three-goal cushion. Now well, Sepulek will help try to clear. Ooh, nice catch. Yeah, I had to extend a little bit on that one. 
Luke Riley. But Keith, uh, back to what you were saying earlier in the game, Gallagher's injury means one guy goes down, it's another opportunity, yeah. and we're seeing guys like Cross and Salazar making the most of, of some extended playing time here. Yeah, about it. Yeah, poor Andy Gallagher tore his ACL in his right knee, and uh, last year tore his ACL in the left knee during the game. Did it in practice this year. His brother Matt, of course, yeah. a senior on this year's team, and his uh, younger brother is uh, playing real nice at the math. A big game against your boys Latin yesterday. That's how you were telling us before the game, great plays in that game, yeah. including a phantom goal. Which, yeah, there was uh, one kind of shaky <laughs> goal. It looked like it uh, was out of the cage, and the math is protesting. <laughs> I said home good field battle. advantage, yeah, and and you know, the math of landing Georgetown Prep now really on a par, I guess, Mark, with the A conference up here. Well, you look at with the math of Paul Rabel, a midfielder heading to Johns Hopkins next year. I mean, they're they're starting Justin Smith at the University of Maryland. They're really starting to turn out some uh, noted a lot for Morgan Wooten and his basketball yeah, program, yeah. But that lacrosse program, really making some waves. And now we got a timeout, Delaware, UMBC. Okay, 9:03 left. See, are we going out on this one? Oh, let, let's take a look at some defense here. Nice defense by Delaware, number 31 for the Blue Hens. That's Paul Rodriguez. We mentioned Silberto, the long stick from a couple years ago. Rodriguez, another lefty, and just all over his uh, his uh, his defensive assignment, number 19, Travis Tomzak. And uh, okay, listen. Zimmerman seeing the play being tattered calls the timeout. Here. They go to a 2-2-2, two, 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 they're doing this. They, they want to carry it here. Okay. This guy comes over, this guy comes here, okay? We need to get a scrape right here. We need to come down straight. So the man that's playing this man can play this guy carrying over. Yeah. Now we don't have to rotate. Yeah. Right. Now, now, now if they go on a one four one, okay? Okay, balls here are shorty here, okay? They, they, if the ball gets here, they're looking to attack. So they're gonna dodge here. We need to slide here, and one of our two close defensemen need to go and then get over, okay? But it'll be a hawk situation. That being said, if the ball's behind the cage, one D guy here, the other D that's on the pipe, Okay, if they're on a one-for-one, has to be up here, helping into the crease. Willis should be fine here, Bobby West should be fine here, a short stick should be right here. Uh, okay, are we clear on that? Two, 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 two. Some defensive coaching right there as we looked at some defense. Greg Carroll and Kevin Warner, two assistant coaches for Bob Schilling Law. Mark, you see the recent history, pretty close, except 1990, when UMBC kind of ripped Delaware 18-9. And their series is 9-8 all time, UMBC. I think Delaware hasn't been here since 1990. Yeah. It surprised me when I saw that note. Yeah, you would think kind of similar schools yeah. right up to right up to 95 from each other. And yeah, Bob Schilling was commenting this week. He's really excited for this game because UMBC well coached, and he feels like UMBC is a, a real nice reflection. Oh, measuring oh, stick, yeah. Villanova, mm -hmm. uh, Alton for Absolutely. Games, teams are going to face in the CAA. UMBC in possession. They've got a 6-3 lead. Second quarter, 8:50 to play in the half. And guys, speaking of conferences, boy, you have to feel good for UMBC going to the American East. They have a really good chance of winning that league, getting the automatic first. Whereas in the ECAC, you had Georgetown, you had UMass, you had yeah. no knock on UMBC, yeah. but some real tough, tough schools. And Don Zimmerman commented on that this week. He just said, man, we were in the best conference probably from top to bottom. Four of their six teams made the NCAAs last no year. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. How about in the America East? Where, where's uh, the competition there this year? Next week we have uh, the Albany, game yeah. of the week. Albany pays a visit and they won the automatic qualifier last year. And oh, and Westerville upstairs, dropped down and went high. And the freshman from John Carroll makes it 7-3. Guys with these tall frames, it's so difficult at times for goalies to pick up where that ball is coming from. And here you see Highland just simply transfers the ball to Westerveld. He gets that thing behind his head, and that's high to high. That's just a stinger mm. over the head of Chris Collins. Yeah, you don't see this too often in other games we've done where a, a little routine play like this ends up in a coal. That wasn't as much got as just a simple swing. Bingo, you get it to the big guy, he fires it in. It's 7-3. to three. We'll return to UMBC Stadium right after this. Lung cancer kills more women than breast and ovarian cancer combined. Learn how early detection could save your life. Request a free lung health kit from Harbor Hospital today. Hi, everybody. Mark Nixon here with Dr. Kenneth Pepper with today's trip on shoulder injuries. Thanks, Mark. Shoulder injuries are common in contact sports. And while most injuries require only rest and ice, decreased range of motion may indicate a more serious problem. An orthopedic surgeon will determine whether rest, physical therapy, or surgery is necessary to get you back in the game. Today's tip was brought to you by the Advanced Centers for Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine, keeping you in the game.
You have an idea for a product or an existing product, then 60 Second Solutions wants to talk to you. You've seen our products in thousands of commercials, and now we're seeking new and original ideas for marketing. If you have a product, idea, or invention, then don't wait. Call the toll-free number on your screen today. We'll send you our free inventor kit that explains how you can get your product in front of millions of potential customers. Isn't it time for your idea? Call the toll-free number on your screen today. Watch Maryland Horse Breeders Thoroughbred Weekly, Sunday at 12 noon, only on ABC2. 7-3, UMBC leads Delaware. Oh. Marston and Smith, and Smith wins the battle again. Man, and quickly, just one move, you got it, and he's gone. And that's impressive, because when you talk about Alex Smith, he had a great career at Boys Latin, but this is a freshman going up against yeah. a senior coming in when he's 73% of his draws. There, there's so much that goes into face -off. Some guys do it with strength, others do it with quickness. There's gotta be a combination, I guess, of all that, right? Lots of different styles of timing. Uh, Mark Doe is a great face-off yeah. man for yeah. Towson. Uh, what he used to do to get his opponent to jump was he would sniff when the players got upset <laughs> and start, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the referee started listening for it and they started flagging him. <laughs> How do they know it was him? <laughs> Illegal that use of like the nose. That sounds like Pierre Goose is telling some great stories <laughs> yeah. with the Ravens, uh, how he would draw off the opposing players. <laughs> some we can't obviously repeat. <laughs> he was known to say hut occasionally, yeah. right? <laughs> and then he goes, what, me? <laughs> Delaware down four in possession. Left hand on goal and a nice save from Sepulet. Nice shot by Ryan Metzbauer. We haven't called his name much this year. He's one of those leaders and those seniors for uh, Delaware. Had an outstanding freshman campaign after a year of prep school at Bridgeton Academy in Maine and then blew his knee out. Yeah. Mark, are you somewhat surprised that his brother Dave, longtime assistant that Bill Tierney, has not gotten a head coach job as yet? I think that uh, Coach Metzbauer up there is the associate head coach at Princeton. He's in such a good situation. He's done such great things with that program along with Coach Tierney. I think the perfect situation has to come along yeah. for him to, to leave Princeton, and I just don't think that's happened for Dave yet. Yeah. Interesting. He's the uncle to Ryan, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I was just thinking yeah. to Uncle, uncle, absolutely. Uncle, brother, it's all in the family. <laughs> it's a Mets power. Yeah. Boy, there's so many relationships. Right? Oh, the without more, a doubt. you do games, every, everybody's related to Everybody's somebody. connected. Uh oh, there's a great look. Franklin Berry <laughs> fired a little wide. They're licking their chops on yeah. velocity right now. You get an opening, you wing it. Well, that's the other half of the time in room. You get it so open, you like you, you geek it. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on with the Delaware defense? Because we've been through many of those games. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I think that they're just confused. UMBC is using a lot of motion. They're uh, they're doing with a lot of different personnel, and I think you, uh, Delaware's a little crossed up at this point. It's Cahill behind the cage, right out in front. And Westerville gets decked after he oh, takes that shot. He's down time. behind the cage. Nice save by Collins. And in the break coming out a few minutes ago, we heard the defensive philosophy that the uh, coaching staff has come up with. And obviously it worked on that situation. Thanks for the save by Collins. Yeah, but again, you got to be worried if you're Delaware. It might be a turnover right here. A tough pass. Collins, handle. Collins saving the bacon of his defense. And again, there was yeah. a wide open retriever on the uh, crease. Here we see again, Collins goes up high. Nice athletic save, punches it up to the sky as he wasn't able Ooh. to make the uh, make the clean save with the Under Armour big hit. right there, number 40. Yeah. Protecting the house, cleaning off the porch on that hit. <laughs> <laughs> A little spring yeah. cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Wright from Denver, Colorado. So two defensemen from uh, Delaware. One, as you see the turnover, Delaware 6, UNBC 1. One from Miami, Florida, one from Denver. Got a Canadian in the Canadian. Canadian. No by Michigan, well represented. <laughs> United Nations of the uh, I'm telling you. No the Nimrod, club. though. <laughs> <laughs> Seven three the score. UMBC with the lead. Impressive first half for the retrievers. Brandon Mundorf had a hat trick in the first quarter. And as we looked at that graphic for the turnovers again, Bob Schilling while saying we just can't turn the ball over against UMBC because Don Zimmerman and his offense, they have the ability to get hot and get quick goals and they've done it so far here in the first half oh great speed yeah try to get the cutter just missed travis toms cutting in front of the cage nice play by david donahue there we'll see if it ends in a uh, umbc possession yes it does all side what mark all side delaware i think that's what they're going to call is a push and what donahue got rid of that ball he was shoved from behind and they had a play on situation had umbc been able to pick up that ground ball the play on would have been waved off, but since they weren't able to gain possession, they are rewarded uh, by the offense from Delaware. You know, the interesting thing about the way this game's going, guys, is Smith has kind of controlled the X, yeah. yet yeah. Delaware's 
down four goals. Ooh, quick double team by Delaware. A little titanium. <laughs> yeah, a lot of titanium. <laughs> Here's Mundorf again. And then we see Delaware just a little bit confused at doing some switching off right there and the directing track. There he goes. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and we got a penalty down. Walked right on in there, just on Mundorf fourth. Mm. Keith, they can't stop no, him. He's like a power forward backing yeah. down and nobody can defend him. There he sees, sets his defenseman up with a little step to the top and gets his defender top side. And then from there, he's able to duck underneath, swoop underneath, gain position, and get off a nice shot. Mundorf again. Here he sees his little stutter step right there. Freezes his defenseman, and that just gives him enough of an alley to get underneath and get a nice shot off. Retrievers lead at 8-3 as we take a timeout. Toyota trucks have a history of higher resale value. Industry estimates say that five years from now, today's average vehicle will be worth about 35% of its purchase price. Toyota trucks could do a lot better. Estimates say that every one of these Toyota trucks will beat the average, some by thousands of dollars. So why lose money on an average truck? Choose a tough Toyota Tacoma or full-size Tundra instead. More choices, better choices. Toyota. and Mustin back to the X after UMBC extends the lead to 8-3, to 402 left. And a pretty impressive first half for the Retrievers. No question, 8-3 to three lead, especially coming off of last week's uh, loss twofold to Maryland and the loss of Andy Gallagher. UMBC has to be feeling real good about the way they've been playing, but yet they still cannot control that X. And okay. U University of Delaware doing a great job on baseball. Smith was down and Mustin's just... Yeah. Chopping wood on him, trying to get it out of there, but Smith retains possession. Well, I think that play really harkens to your point earlier, Scott, about there's so much goes into faceoff. It's not only the two guys battling for the ball, but it's the wing, wing play, yeah. keeping the pressure off of your faceoff guys, and then if that ball does get out of the two, the radius of the two faceoff men being able to pick it up off the carpet from the wing. Delaware had two quick goals. They were down 5 1 after one, and they came out in a hurry, bang, bang, to start the second quarter, but since then, UMBC has gathered the momentum again. It looks like UMBC, uh, Scott, dropping into somewhat of a zone defense here, packing it in a little tight, daring the, uh, the Delaware Blue had to shoot from the outside. Oh, and a kick save. Nice job. Bob Mounier with the shot. Cephalette got the foot out and made a nice save. Yeah, beautiful kick save, as they say in hockey. Save and abuse for, uh, for Cephalette using his feet. Oh, look out. That was Luke Riley down low, took a hit. It looks like we're having a legal body check as referee Brian Abbott. There you see the UNWC defender falling down, and when the defender's in a compromised position like that, you cannot follow through on your check. Even though the player was falling down, the referee Brian Abbott, I guess, in this situation, feeling that the uh, defender had a chance to right his course and avoid the hit, and as such, uh, since he didn't avoid it, a legal body check, UNBC will be up one man for up to 60 seconds. The fourth extra man opportunity on the afternoon for the Retrievers. Already with a five goal lead, now they've got a chance with the extra man. I think that graphic uh, one for three UNBC is on the afternoon. Delaware yet to be offended. So we'll see uh, UNBC right now working out of a 1-3-2. And here are the cutters into a 1-4-1. One, one. Nice patience by the Retrievers. Into some heavy traffic there, well defense. We try to get it to Mundorf, but there were about three blue jerseys around him that time. Nice defense by Delaware. Uh-oh, here come the blue hands, and a shot in the score. 
So down one, Andy Hipple scores on the other end, and a shorthanded goal, that ought to give him a little life, Mark. Well, lacrosse, what you teach your defenders when you're up at the midfield line, you check down on the attackmen to prevent them from picking up a ground ball. But here we see Chris Collins recognizes something with the UMBC defense. Hey, turn around, and he flicks it up, and there he sees just the ground ball missed by the UMBC defender. Hipple's the beneficiary of that missed ground ball, and he just comes in and sticks it one-on-one -on -one pass to help with Kevin Sepulak to a gift for Andy Hipple, and he does what he needs to do, and he scores his seventh goal of the season. I think it was David Donahue that had a chance for the ground ball for UMBC. Couldn't come up with it, and Delaware cashes in. Here comes Mustin, right-hand shot on goal, but a save from Collins. So Mustin take it, try to make it, but uh, Collins wouldn't let him in. And UMBC, that was a man down goal scored by Delaware, so a double whammy. They misplay the ground ball, they give up a goal while they were up a man. So right now the Retrievers, back to 6-1-6 six six action. And we've got about a minute and a half left in the half. Keith Mills down on the field. We'll hear from both coaches at halftime. So right now, from UMBC, you're trying to get that one back in the cross. That's what you call a cheap goal. Yeah. Huge for Delaware, but UMBC will call it there. That's a gimme right there. So they'll try to get that one back and get that lead back up to five. That's a two-goal swinger. Yeah. You're thinking you got the extra man for a minute. You might get one. Instead, you give one up. Then we see UMBC's a turnover. Really their first uh, botched transition. Uh, yeah, they've taken well offensively. Well care, good care of the ball. They've been crisp and they've been smart offensively. That's really their first uh, unforced error, if you will, as we take a look at Bob Schilling while giving instructions to his Delaware Blue Hens. And now we'll go on the flip side here. If you're Delaware, try to chip away at that lead and go on another little little mini run here, if you will, before the, the half ends. Just a little bit over a minute left to try to chip away at this four-goal retriever advantage. Yeah, if they're 8-5, they've got to feel like they're almost tied the way this thing has gone. Sure. Nice clear. That's the first half of the battle is Delaware gets the ball to the offensive end. So now they'll try to set something up. I wouldn't be surprised to see Delaware take a timeout. There you go. <laughs> Coach Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> There's the timeout. It comes with 50 seconds left in the half, and they'll try to set up uh, that last shot, right? Probably. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Although from uh, Delaware, what they've uh, been hasty a little bit. In their first goal they scored, they saw something in the UMBC defense that was quick. They were quick to pounce on. And then on that right. speed situation, Let's, let's hear what the play is. Keep going. All right, they're going to start shutting it. All right, we might go sunrise and use you to pick a little bit then. All right, or we can use 311. Now we still have the dodge from the right hand on top. All right, if, hey, listen, if we uh, if we get the ball back, we're going to go first midfield. All right, Franklin, you're going to be the last one out of the box. We'll just come in. All right, we'll put 13 here, 24 here. Um, what do we have? 21, 26. All right, we're going to dodge, and we're going to go 614. All right, so with these guys coming out and sneaking. All right, now let's, All right. let's Hey, if we don't have time, if it's like 10 seconds, Get the ball and look good up. Look inside too, all right, Corey. You're being out with it. Listen, there. we're down on defense here. Here's what I want. All right, I want right in here. I want 24. All right, I want 13 to go to the goal, and I want 26 to go for the ball. You lift ball goal. Right in here. Let's right go. Down. Oh, let's down. Hey. Bobby Benson talking a little code, a little sunrise at 3-11. Yeah. What Don Zimmerman was saying right there, much like defenseman shot down on attacker stick, what he's saying is if the defense gets the ball and chucks it up to the offensive end, he wants his two attackmen lifting up those defensive sticks, and Drew Westervelt, number 26, going hard to the goal, trying to pick up the ground ball and get a cheap one, just like Delaware just got on UNBC. All right, there you got the X's and the O's, and now clock running, 45 seconds left. And then we see a nuance in coaching. Bobby Benson always thinking offense as the offensive coordinator for UMBC, even though his guys are down there playing on the defense. defense yeah. Delaware very patient here. Allrich behind the cage. That shot goes straight up in the air, deflected. And it's out of play. Nice hustle by Sepulak, beating that ball to the end line, and it's out on the beltway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out on Sulphur Spring Road, <laughs> falling lacrosse balls. But that's unfortunate for St. Mary, uh, excuse me, for Delaware, because a beautiful base dodge that time looked like it was Ryan Metzbauer got inside the UMBC defense, and as he uncorked his shot, hit off the helmet of a UMBC defender, and then Sepulak, heady play on his part to run that ball out, get possession for UMBC. Now Bobby Benson's offense can go to work. Here you go. <laughs> And a whistle with 15 seconds left. They want to drop some more X's. I, I guess I miscounted. I thought UNBC had taken both their timeouts there in the first half, but 
Uh, they have one to burn here at the end of the first 30 minutes of action, so smart timeout for UMBC, definitely setting up a final shot opportunity. We're right back here again next week on our Game of the Week. UMBC and Albany as they get into conference play in the America East. Yeah, we're talking about Albany, coached uh, by Hopkins graduate Scott Marr, former player for Don Zimmerman at Johns Hopkins. And Albany, the automatic qualifier for the uh, America East last year, following the Princeton in the first round of the NCAAs. And then uh, April 10th, Scott Navy at Maryland. Yeah, that's always a good one. And then, and then the biggie. Yeah. Prime time, <laughs> right? The 100th meeting between Hopkins and Maryland, and that could be 1-2 undefeated uh, showdown game, regular season game of the year. Batting down the hatches, the 100th meeting between Maryland and Hopkins, and then a week later, Penn at Loyola. Penn coached by Hopkins graduate Brian Volker and Loyola up at, uh, in uh, Rhode Island this weekend, taking on Brown. Then we've got Towson at Hopkins, and then Hopkins at Loyola, so some local matchups to close out the 2004 schedule. Uh, some of the young uh, lacrosse players looking on here. Nice afternoon, had some morning rain, but it's cleared up, a little overcast now. Eight fours our score, UMBC leads Delaware. 15 seconds left in the first half. UMBC trying to get one more. UMBC starting out in a 3-3 right here. Franklin Barry, look for him to be involved in this play some sort. Four seconds, time running out. The bouncer and sticking with it is Chris Collins, and that's the end of the first half. So decent shot on goal, and uh, you saw Collins move right with that hop mark. Nice save by Collins. It looked like UMBC was just working a little three-man game up top with their midfielders. They got a far outside shot. It was a decent look, and Collins was able to gobble up the save. So uh, it was a 5-1 lead for UMBC after one. Delaware closed to 5-3, got up to 8-3, their biggest lead at five goals, and then uh, Delaware scored the final goal to cut it to 8-4. As we said, Keith Mills will uh, be talking to both coaches here at halftime. First, Bob Schilling, Law, and then uh, a little later, Don Zimmerman. Halftime score, 8-4. Let's go down to the field and Keith. Yeah, with me, Bob Schilling. Oh, Bob, are you somewhat surprised that this game is wide open? Uh, uh, I know you wanted to covet the ball and play time of possession. 12 goals at the half, a lot of goals. Yeah, it's uh, definitely up and down the field type game. And, and uh, well, obviously, we've got to do a better job on Mundorf. I think he's got five goals up to this point. Um, maybe check his eligibility. <laughs> if, he's, if, he's not in, if he's ineligible, I'll try to negate this by goals. What do, you, what do you tell your team right now at the half? Well, I mean, we're not going to score all four, five, uh, four goals on one shot. So we got to, you know, peck away at it. Lacrosse is that type of sport where it's going to come in flow. So hopefully we'll get our flow going. I think we're doing some nice things on, on, on offense. We've got to get a couple stops from the defensive end so that we can uh, catch up from the offensive end. Okay. Um, Alex Smith is, uh, I think, performing yeah. well face-off uh, circle, which, which no is doubt. a concern. Munson's uh, an excellent face-off guy, so he's given us some more possessions, but you know, we've got to handle the ball better and uh, defend a little bit better as well. Okay, Bob, thank you so thank much. You. Bob Schillingall, he won 200 games for a reason. That, he's, he knows how to coach this game. He's team down four. We'll be back with more right after this. The Toyota Lacrosse Game of the Week. Brought to you by Baltimore County Savings Bank. Come home to Baltimore County Savings Bank. Union Memorial Sports Medicine. Experience matters. And Bud Light. Make it a Bud Light. for two years or get 10% off all TVs, $3.99 and up. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. Best Buy. Are you ready? 
The 2004 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships are returning to Baltimore. Enjoy hard-hitting, heart-pounding action as the nation's top Division I, II, and III teams battle for NCAA supremacy. It all happens at MNC Bank Stadium this Memorial Day weekend, May 29th through the 31st. For tickets, call the Ravens Ticket Office at 410-261-RAVE or visit lax4baltimore.com for more information. The 2004 NCAA Men's Lacrosse Championships. Be there. Do you have a great idea for a new product? Every year, literally billions of dollars are spent on products new to the market, and this could be your year. Advent Product Development can help. Advent Product Development specializes in marketing new ideas and inventions, and we're interested in talking to you. If your idea qualifies, we can patent trademark it for you and take it to market. Or we can create a TV infomercial and sell your product directly to the public. Don't let your ideas slip away. Call 888-347-7856 for your free inventor's kit. Call now. The Toyota Halftime Report is brought to you by Toyota. More choices, better choices. Get the feeling, Toyota. 8-4 at the half, UMBC leads Delaware in our Toyota Halftime Report today. Rick White takes a look at a couple of Baltimore area players who are making their mark with the Fighting Blue Hens in Delaware. The University of Delaware is on the rise. The football team won division's NCAA championship and the lacrosse team is ranked in the top 20 for the first time since 2000. And one of the reasons for the Blue Hens rise to the top 20 is fifth year senior Matt Allrich who has 17 goals and 8 assists in Delaware's first 8 games. But Matt knows this is all about the team. That's exactly what we are, we're a team. You know, we don't have, we don't have the preseason All-Americans that everyone else in Division One does. We got you know, 42 guys that know their role. Try to move the ball around as quickly as possible. Let's get our guys to the right spot. I think we're really blue collar, a blue collar team. You know, we're not the white collar team to go out and finesse these goals. We, we earn our goals. You know, we defensively, we hit. You know, we keep, we keep people on their toes. Besides that blue collar work ethic and hard hitting defense, what's been keeping the other team on their toes is freshman face off specialist Alex Smith who has won 82 of 135 face-offs for a 607 winning percentage. Some guys are uh, pretty happy knowing that I can get in there and hopefully get the ball most of the time. You just can't emphasize the fact that you're getting more possessions and there's a, a better opportunity past two or three years to an area that we've been very weak in. And um, I, I think a major part of our success this year is due to the face -off. And success is what this team wants and believe they can have. I want to make the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, it's been since 1999 since we made the NCAA tournament. And uh, you know, we have to do some things and we have to work a little harder to get there, but I, I really think we can do it this year. We've been underdogs. We're always underdogs, you know. We really don't get much publicity, like you said. But uh, we believe in ourselves and we believe that if we play our game and do what we, the things we do well, we can play with anyone in the country. So watch out for these underdogs. They may fight back. Good look at a couple of local guys here making an impact at the University of Delaware. This week's Union Memorial Sports Medicine Scholar Athlete is Brian Johnson. Brian is a UMBC junior majoring in visual and performing arts, carrying a 3.68 grade point average. Congratulations to Scholar Athlete Brian Johnson from Union Memorial Sports Medicine, Experience Matters. Our halftime score, 8-4, UMBC leads Delaware. We'll return right after this. Did you know that thumb sprains are one of the most common of all ski injuries? I'm Dr. Peter Ennis, a hand specialist at Union Memorial Sports Medicine. Skier's thumb is usually caused by a fall on an outstretched hand or thumb. If moving your thumb is painful, a physical exam and x-rays will determine if the injury is minor or major. Treatment can range from splinting to surgical repair of the ligament, followed by proper therapy. If you've been injured, call the experts for fast, free advice. Union Memorial Sports Medicine. Experience matters. Hi, I'm Keith Hernandez. And I'm Walt Clyde Frazier. What a marvelous night for the action. Let's go to the play-by-play. -play. Oh, there's Mr. Graybeard approaching this hottie. Clyde, that's got to hurt. Yeah, no play for Mr. Gray. Get that man out. Just a man brush in color gel. It's specially formulated to penetrate coarse facial hair and gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. 
Get through the strikeouts too. <laughs> Just for me and Joe. The rejuvenator. All right, we're back at halftime. 8-4 is our score. UMBC leads Delaware as we take a look at the Bud Light halftime highlights. So there we see Delaware off to the quick start. Matt Ulrich with the first goal to get them up 1-0. But then it was a 5-0 UMBC run. Here, James Highland off of the nice dodge. High to low beats Chris Collins. UMBC is riding high at that point. Drew Westervelt inside to cross. Beautiful feed, beautiful shot. UMBC at this point is up 4-1. to one. That was the behind-the-back shot by Mundorf. Certainly one of the highlights of the first half. And then it was the Mundorf show, right? Yeah, Brendan Mundorf just earning his money today, taking hits, uh, getting in front of the goal. Here we see the goal by Cross. Excuse me. Nice feed inside. Beautiful shot. And, uh, you know, Mundorf really the catalyst, as we heard Bob Schillinglaw at halftime. He's going to check on his eligibility in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mundor finished off his hat trick here in the first quarter. And this one's just muscle and turn in the corner. Yeah, and you got to be really impressed with the wrist strength of Mundorf. And the goalie has to respect when he's straight up and down like that. Is he going high? Is he going low? Great wrist strength to put it low. And then Delaware got two quick ones to start the second quarter. And here we see number 20 Hall in the feed from Cam Howard. Made it 5 to 2. Seconds later, Alex Smith, six point man, Matt Ulrich. He drills his second of the afternoon. At that point, Delaware's feeling good, only down 5-3. to three. And then part of that deep depth with the retrievers, a lot of contributors. Yeah, here we go, number 42, Jerry Salazzo with time and room. The junior attackman out of Silver Springs, he makes it, uh, stops the University of Delaware run to make it 6-3. to three. And then Drew Westervelt finds himself wide open with time and room and plants his feet and just puts a bullet past Chris Collins right by his right ear. Beautiful shot by Drew Westervelt. At that point, it's 7-3. to three. And Then Mundorf again. Similar inside, nice inside move. Puts it down, goes low, shoots low to low, makes it 8-3. to three. And then Hip will finish the first half scoring for the Blue Hens, making it 8-4. Right now, let's go down to the field and Keith Mills. Yeah, Don Zimmerman, just out of the uh, UMBC locker room, Don, and, and you got to be pretty happy with, your, with the half. I know there's a long way to go, but, uh, boy, a lot of different guys contributing for you today. Yeah, we're, we're, we're playing well offensively. We're getting some good shots, sizing hard. That's what we wanted to do. You know, and uh, we haven't been winning the draw like we have in the past, so mm -hmm. our defense doing a nice job, too. But it's a 60-minute game, and, um, you know, I thought we relaxed a little bit there in the second quarter, and we got to come back and finish strong. Okay, Zim, thanks right. a lot. Head coach Don Zimmerman, his retriever's up 8-4. We'll be back with the second half face-off right after this. Toyota Lacrosse Game of the Week, brought to you by Advanced Centers for Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine, keeping you in the game. Jiffy Lube, the well-oiled machine, and Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. It's all new from Toyota, a full-size four-door with room for a family of five. It's Toyota's all-new big rig, the Tundra Double Cab, featuring all of Tundra's best a smooth, quiet ride, the strength of iForce V8 power, built to last quality. And now Tundra is longer, wider, and taller to give you full-size four-door convenience and comfort. Need a powerful truck and a refined SUV? Now you can get both on one set of wheels. Tundra Double Cab, only at your Toyota dealer. Hi, everybody. Mark Nixon here with Dr. Sam Matt for today's tip on knee injuries. Mark, most knee injuries are minor sprains. But joint swelling, instability, restricted motion, or inability to bear weight may indicate a more serious injury. If you experience any of these symptoms, contact a sports medicine specialist to get you back in the game. Today's tip was brought to you by the Advanced Center for Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine, keeping you in the game. Let's take a look at the Union Memorial Sports Medicine first half stats. You'll be see 18 to 10 shot advantage. Face off, there's the big a uh, surprise here in this afternoon, 10-4 in favor of Delaware. Ground balls, UMBC winning that battle. Save, Chris Collins with seven. Kevin Sepulak with three turnovers. Delaware right at the ship midway through the second quarter, 6-3. to three. And then EMO, UMBC enjoying a lot more extra man opportunities than Delaware. If Bob Schillinglaw thought he would be up 8-4 at the X at the half, yeah. I don't think he would think he'd be down four goals, but that's where he is. <laughs> I think both coaches are somewhat surprised at that stat. You heard Don Zimmerman say, hey, we're not getting the ball, but our defense is doing a pretty good job. 
He had mentioned how proud he was of how his yeah. defense has played all year long, only giving up 11 on the road to Duke. He only gave up nine to uh, to the uh, Terrapins, who, as we see our out-of-town school board guys, Maryland, sticking it to the University of North Carolina, 7-3. to three. Big ACC matchup down there. And look at Georgetown, all over Duke, 7-3. to three. I think our primetime game, Maryland and, and uh, Hopkins, is still on track to be uh, one of the best games, most anticipated yeah, of the no season. About it. Good In on goal, and a shot in the score. So Delaware wastes no time. Ryan Overs gets inside and beats Kevin Sepulik to make it 8-5. Overs' second point of the afternoon. His first goal to go with an assist. There he stops to see what play can develop. And number seven for the Retrievers, that's Luke Riley, is a step behind him. So Overs does what any smart player would do. He beelines right to the goal. And he even has time to put the stick in his strong hand, which is his right hand. He sticks it past Kevin Sepulak. So a great start to the second half for the Blueheads. Keith Ryan Overs from Lindbrook, New York. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Quinn Kessler from Lindbrook. <laughs> I'm sure we'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> Probably grew up with a picture of Quinn on his wall, I bet. <laughs> that and took, it took, it took Overs about a half to get over the shock that Quinn is not, not with us this year. <laughs> Man, you guys are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around. Hey, Scott and I have been together now for 15, 16 right. years, Scott. Yeah. You know. I'm not leaving the booth for, for a second. <laughs> <laughs> but Lindbrook also the home uh, guys to the Doniger brothers, uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan yeah. Marcus. Uh, pretty pretty good country, yeah. right? Real good area for lacrosse. Real hot bed. So Zolvers again gives it up this time. Through traffic. Ooh. Kind of an iffy shot. Yeah. Jordan Hall dropped down. Well, that's a Canadian for you. They play yeah, with Bob. those real, uh, real uh, exaggerated whips in their stick, and they shoot from all over the place. And they love to get that thing down low and go up high with it. Only problem is the goalie doesn't know where it's going, but a lot of Neither times the shooter he. doesn't either. And that time, UN no backup for Delaware, so UNBC gets possession. Yeah, you got the feeling there's a lot of lacrosse left here to play. Yeah. It was 8-4, but... Uh, Entertaining game, yeah. no doubt about it. Up and down. After the first couple of possessions where they were sort of feeling each other out, it's nice to see him play it. No yeah. doubt. But yeah, not getting no on the board. Throwing it around for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to the cage, make something happen. <laughs> Westerveld. Easy to spot at 6'4. Yeah, no doubt. Had himself a nice first half, a goal and two assists. Here's Barry, the senior. Never missed a game at UMBC, four-year starter, but a turnover here, and here come the Blue Hands. A great play by Rodriguez, who got the steal and then makes the rush. Not much on the pass, but he's got it there. Oh, nice. And right out in front, and back-to-back -back goals. This is Allrich finishing this time, and it's suddenly 8-6 with 12-19 to play in the third quarter. Paulrich with his third goal of the afternoon, and it's all started on the defensive end. Look at Rodriguez. Look at his beautiful flat check. Great timing and great positioning of the stick. And then he picks it up, and he starts the fast break. And here we see Rodriguez cruising in, and really no break developed as the UMBC defense did a great job of getting back. But Allrich then puts the ball behind to number five for the Blue Hens, Cam Howard. And Howard just gets it right back to Allrich, no, who slams it from the doorstep. Mark, when he passed the ball, no one picked him up. Exactly. And all he did was kind of... Just roam right in front of the net. Pat Mustin wins that face off for the Retrievers. And that was uh, probably a, one they really needed after yeah. giving up a couple of quick goals. They could kind of get a possession regroup here and see if they can get something on, on the board. And we'll see what defensive adjustments that uh, Delaware tried to make at the half. Delaware Keith came out just like they did the second quarter. Bang, bang. Boom. Those two goals, they were down 5-1. They got two in a hurry. And they've done it here to start the third quarter. I took the words right out of my mouth. Very similar start to the third quarter as much as to the second. We'll see if UMBC can respond. Low bouncer, and uh, Collins makes the save on that one. And that's big, too, because Delaware, that right there could have been the answer from UMBC, the reply to this two-goal run by, by uh, actually making a three-goal run if you count yeah. Hipples at the end of the first half. And Collins comes up nicely with a, a real nice save, gets that ball back on the offensive end for Delaware. Only down 8-6 to six at this point. Delaware 6-2 and two on the year, 2-2 two and two on the road. UMBC's only played four games. They are 2-2. Two and two. UMBC came in ranked 14th. Delaware moved into the top 20 last week with their win over Air Force. This is a Delaware team uh, 
the struggle the last couple of years, 5 and 10 last year, 3 and 11 and 02, but prior to that, 99, they went 14 and 2, were ranked as high as number 6, mm. went to the NCAA quarterfinals. As Mark said, John Grant, great player on that team, and boy, instant offense. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, good catch there to say the Delaware guys last year started off the year at four and two and then finished up of course one and eight. I asked Coach Chillingwall about that. He said totally different team. They're not even thinking about last year. He likes the chemistry of this group. He likes the leadership of uh, Allrich, of Met Fowler, of Collins. He's real proud of this group and expects uh, some real nice things. You know guys, you coached that long, 20, what, 26 years for 29 overall for Chillingwall. You're gonna have some seasons like that. Sure, it's not gonna be. 15 and 2 every year. Cam Howard gets it stripped. Nice defense by the retrievers. Pressinger. Yeah, Pressinger's got one of the few guys that have returned on defense for UMBC. That's like the second or third time we've seen them make a nice defensive play to kind of turn the transition or turn the momentum around. Nice patience and good strength as the attackman for Delaware was bearing in. All he did was just take that stick from under his arm and then did a nice over the head job, created the ground ball. And then we see University of Delaware with their seventh turnover, UMBC with four. So that gap is closing a little bit. It yeah, was not six bad. To one at one point. Not yeah. bad. Uh, 11 turnovers here with total nine and a half minutes left third quarter. We consider our game a couple weeks ago, Townsend, oh, Ireland. <laughs> at this point, I think yeah. both teams were over 40. <laughs> here comes Mundorf, and here comes the defense, too. They'll double up on him. I think you can expect to see that for the rest of the second half. I it's guess he cleared out el the eligibility check yeah. at halftime. Because <laughs> he's not got a lot. Field. And I think Watson showing law said it. He said, oh, 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 maybe I should have said that. But obviously it was said in jest. Yeah, and, of course. <laughs> and a big first half. Oh, great speed. Nice. Great speed. And a good save. Island with the shot. And Chris Collins with a nice save. Yeah, beautiful save, Collins, 5'10", 180, but made himself bigger in the cage on that particular save by making himself a straight up and down, trying to cut away that angle, and he nice, makes a nice body stop. Collins uh, obviously has some leadership skills. The first ever sophomore captain at Delaware. Yeah. Not too often you can take a sophomore and say, hey, you're captain, you're a leader of this team. He's now a junior. And a real heady player, as Coach Chilliwell was commenting to me this week, both Collins and Ryan Metzbauer wish to be coaches upon graduating from the University of Delaware. So, look out. Shot on goal. Zeplak couldn't cover up. And it's raked in. I think it was Allridge, Scott, got the quick stick in there, Mark. That's his fourth goal. So he and Mundorf are putting on an offensive show, but Zeplak Mace got the original save, yes. and then Aldrich with the rebound. Well, here we see the garbage man, Matt, played by Matt Allridge. The initial shot from Ryan Metzbauer. Nice low shot. Nice save by Zeplak, but he doesn't corral it. And there we see, just like Boom. in hockey, yeah. Just getting that stick one in front of that crease there. A little wrister, right? Yeah, <laughs> got to get to pass Sepulak. And we've got a timeout, 8.09 to play in the third quarter. We've got a one-goal game. UMBC leads 8-7. Four at the half is cut it to one. It's an 8-7 game. Big face off here. Mustin and Smith and Pat Mustin comes up with it. Oh, good passing and it's oh, it's in the goal. It is in the goal. Yeah. 
Boy, what looked like a crossing pass that got it, got deflected maybe off off of Collins and in. I got to see a replay on this, guys. I really didn't see what happened. Boy, really unlucky for the Delaware Blue Heads. I, I mean, the, the perfect fast break is set up. Mustn't hit the point, man. You go adjacent down low, and then the cross cage pass. Not oh, 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 oh so that's that's for yeah. Delaware. Collins looking for the ball like the rest of it, yeah. and it bounced behind him. Wow. And a little bit of a redirection right there. I believe Corey Warner will get credit for that goal since he's the one that tried the pass attempt and it hit off the Delaware defender. And a legal procedure on the faceoff. UMBC will get it back. So the momentum swings again. Yeah. And this, this oh. little battle, Scott, between Smith and, and Mustin is the game within a game. Here goes Mustin in on Cage. <laughs> and a good save that time. Collins, when Mustin puts his head down, yeah. we've seen that for years. He's going home. <laughs> and he's not yeah. passing. 6'3", 220. That's a lot of Mustin. He had to <laughs> but that battle between Smith and Mustin has really evolved into one of the best of the day. Oh, nice effort. UMBC diving, getting the stick on it. Who was that? 22 for the retrievers, Rob Cross. Big effort. That's one of the things we, I've really been impressed with in every game that we've done this year, guys, is the riding of mm -hmm. the attackmen this year. They're really being tenacious, very aggressive, and a lot of times turning a turnover back into an offensive possession. Well, we've seen a shorthanded goal in this game. Just saw a fluke goal on a deflection off the defender. And a tight game. Those oh. can be the difference. There's a bullet. So Delaware comes right back. <laughs> Ryan Metzbauer scores, and it's 9-8. Well, we saw the graphic, 22-16, and Delaware's 17th shot on the afternoon is a goal by Ryan Metzbauer. Delaware right now playing very confident offensively. Nice dodge here by Ryan Overs. Draws the double team. Where did the double team come from? Up top. Ryan Metzbauer does a great job of filling that gap, establishing a little bit of time and room. And look at the velocity and the placement of that shot. Upper 90. Beautiful shot by Ryan Metzbauer. Delaware guys right now is feeling real good about them. The holes are getting cheap in this one. And this time Alex Smith comes up with the draw. Here comes the fighting blue hands and a nice save. Defelec right on that one. And Andy Hipple went right for the jugular, Scott, after another clean faceoff by Smith. Good save for Kevin Sepelak to give the retrievers a great game. Best, best game yeah. we've had this year. Most entertaining by far. And a turnover here for UMBC, guys, as the exchange from the long pole down to the short stick attackman was disrupted. And here we see uh, Delaware, Chris Collins with eight saves, Sepelak now with five. You get the feeling that uh, we're, we're going to be going down to the last minute or two. Yeah, you would game. think. It's been a game of runs thus far. UMBC going on a five-goal run, then Delaware with two, and then UMBC with three, Delaware with four. Now the teams have traded. We'll see if that trend continues. Nifty stick work by Brendan Mundorf getting that ground ball at the midfield and not going offside. Mundorf getting worked over. <laughs> Runs away from Deckelbaum here. Look out. Finally picked up by number 21, Willis. Deckelbaum doing his best Chris Pasavia imitation <laughs> with his windshield wiper faking the check. Yeah, another local kid from Owings Mills High School. I think everybody now kind of take a breathing, yeah, a, breathing yeah. a sigh of relief here. Let's collect their, our breath and let's regroup with uh, 545 left to go. It's been wild back and <laughs> forth end to end for most of the third quarter. Totally an opposite game than we thought, guys. Yeah. I mean, we thought eight old five, ball, yeah, seven yeah, all over the end. <laughs> we see for the first time today, UMBC has its midfielders inverted behind, working a little bit of a play here. Ooh, nice defense. Yeah, forced oh, that, huh, guys, into the triple team, actually. And paid for it. He did. The bad thing it. about it for UNBC is the possession gets back to Delaware. Rodriguez is another clear. And that's that way only one goes. And that's a real nice clear for Delaware. I thought Chris Collins would have been well served to let that ball roll out of bounds and get possession, but as it is, he picked it up. It was a little hairy down there on the end line for a second or two. But Delaware did nice to collect themselves and clear it clean. Yeah, and Joe Trent, Scott guy you're well aware of from Boston, uh, has been been real valuable in that in that guy kind of the middle, uh, the buffer between the defense and the attack, clearing the ball throughout the day. Transferred from Essex, where he was national junior college player of the year last year. Wow. Steve Mall produced, yeah, you know, out of Boston, Boston absolutely. absolutely. 
we're seeing that quite a bit, guys, especially with our local community colleges around here, your Essex, uh, if that's a word, of community. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's Facebook all I'm asking. Community asking. Community college, right. Right. Hill right across the street. <laughs> and Herkimer up north. And Anna Rundle. Anna Rundle's Anna Rundle. Rundle. a good job. Yeah. And a good check. Another one. Another stick check. Probably four or five of them from both teams today. Donahue forced the turnover. Look out. Teammates got a call. Oh! Boy, did you take a shot? Yeah. 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 We got a flag on that one. And the whistle that, that was Moudier, yeah. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, and that's, um, I think it was Matt Gallagher, Andy's brother, clearing and taking a shot. Unfortunately, Mark, as you call, somebody got word to him right the last minute. You see him, look around right there. He's starring as Maria Antoinette here. <laughs> <laughs> and there we see the wild swing from number 25, Moudier, catches him right in the side of the head. And that play was blown Ooh. dead, guys, because he was fouled inside the box once he stepped outside the box. That kills the game. The possession short. So we've got a timeout. 357 left third quarter. We got a good one. UMBC 9, Delaware 8. Their toolbox. Our toolbox. More superior weather hardware working for you. Live Storm Center Doppler and the only weatherness. See the difference? Storm Team, only on ABC2 News. Now's the time to get great Toyota value. Hey! What did I go about you? There's great deals on Toyota's full line of SUVs, like RAV4, the most gas-efficient SUV in its class. There's award-winning Highlanders and Go Anywhere 4Runners, both with available third-row seating, or get an eight-passenger Sequoia. Don't miss Toyota's nationwide sales event with legendary quality, incredible selection and value. Hey, what's not to like? Hey! So you want to work here, huh? Yeah. Well, with our Jiffy Lube Signature Service Oil Change, we do things differently. Really? Really. First, we replace the old oil, then we replace the oil filter. Then we inspect the wiper blades, air filtration system, and lights. Really? After vacuuming, we clean the windows. Windows? A thorough check of all the belts. There's belts? Then we lubricate the chassis if necessary. <laughs> we check and top off windshield washer fluid. After that, we check the fluid level in the battery, adding water if needed. Visit Jiffy Lube for their syrup. Some might say obsessive signature service oil change. Then we slip under the car to check the differential. <laughs> Fan Cam is brought to you by Six Flags America. So big, so close. I-95, exit 15A. This game so close. Yeah, 9-8, 355 to play third quarter. UMBC up by one. They've got possession. They're back on the extra man, guys. Their fifth opportunity so far of the afternoon, I believe. And they've got, this is, now's a real great time to take full advantage of the Delaware foul. They'll be man advantage for up to one minute. Working out out of a 2-4. An interesting set here. You don't really see this a whole lot. But now it's morphing more into a 3-2-1. Morphing. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> the Retrievers led 8-4 at the half, but Delaware battling them here in the third quarter. And I think what they're going to try to do here is get it down low and look tap pop it back up top to Highland, who really has an absolute, just a, just a blistering shot from up top. Oh. That was Highland. Tried to get it to him. Played by Allrich. Mundorf kind of went submarine and kind of got a kind of sailed on him. And Allrich really was some slick stick work himself right there midfield. Four goals for Allrich, but you also have to be impressed with his stick handling ability. Really on the ground balls and doing everything a senior leader should be doing. He had a goal in 22 streak straight games that ended last week against Air Force, but he's back on the Made board here today. Made up for it today. Four, four goals today. And even when he wasn't scoring goals, he had three assists last week so against Air Force. 21 goals on the season already. Impressive. Nearing 30 points. Hasn't, hasn't even started conference play. No. Yeah, big week for Delaware next week. They've got Hofstra, then they travel to Towson, I believe. And Villanova sprinkled in there as well, so. Uh-oh. Going to go out of bounds. Or is it? No. All those lines. A lot of lines out there. <laughs> Let me tell you what. Nice defense there, and Cam Howard had to throw. Oh, oh, yeah, he he that. Whoa. Howard, number five, ripped number 21. Donahue. 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 Yeah. But it all began, guys, with that Aaron pass, and, you know, I, I said it was going out because there's 400 lines on the field. <laughs> you can't tell, but pretty good one. Two guys, a little upright. Yeah. Going right at it, mano a mano. You're looking at the ball, and suddenly there's a man getting it between you and the ball. Candidate for the Under Armour big hit. 
as you see Don Zimmer. I wonder if Zim's ever protected the house. <laughs> Former St. Paul's standout. And a, not a lot of people really know that he was a great player at Hopkins. He Definitely. Was, played for Henry Ciccaroni and yep. solid player. Learned the game from Henry Ciccaroni, mm -hmm. Fred Smith mm -hmm. at Johns Hopkins. <laughs> Bob Scott Bob obviously Scott. involved in that in that whole yeah. trio, and that's not a bad three guys to learn the game from. And was an assistant at North Carolina yeah. as well under Willie Scott. Willie Scott. Won a cha national championship there. Assisted at Princeton and Loyola as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty good lacrosse tree right there, huh? Looks like when that last hit, guys, it got Delaware for hands to the face. Okay, uh, yeah, a little so bit of a man, high, huh? so UMBC another man advantage here. Ooh, oh, tough pass. good idea. <laughs> Tough, tough to make that play. Yeah, you or not so play. Yeah. yeah. If it works, it's great. If not, you see what happens. Yeah, the perfect angle where we are. Problematic on a whole bunch of different levels because one, you got to you got to get it through. Yeah. The defensive sticks, and then two, even if it gets there, well, a la well, that time, James Highland didn't pick up the trajectory of the ball, so ball goes out of bounds. Possession to Delaware, and well, really two squandered opportunities for the retrievers as we look at the turnovers right now. Ten to seven. Delaware has three more than the than UNBC. Oh, yeah. nice catch. 115 to play in the third quarter. Delaware down a goal. They're in possession. 9-8 UMBC. Delaware's already won more games this year than they did a year ago. Nice defensive set here by UMBC. Finally, Delaware clears it. A great nice. Greavy. Another local guy from Glen Arm, Maryland. A nice job by Delaware to recognize once you clear that ball outside of your box and you're in between the restraining line of your box, you can take all day all to day, clear the yeah. ball. A nice pressure by UMBC. saw so UMBC well. do that earlier. Yeah. Gravy, another you BL do. guy. Yeah. Learned yeah. the game from Quint Kessman. <laughs> <laughs> Struggles. Put Bob Strive. Struggles at times. Oh, Bobby. Learned from yeah. Quint. Then they straighten <laughs> them out. <laughs> I don't think Bobby realized that when he hired Quint as a goalie coach that uh, hit the end of all his... The, uh, any kind credit, of credit he was yeah. going to get was just right, right down the tube. I was looking at uh, <laughs> Bob Staff. He's got like six assistants and five team managers. And they come out like the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> they take their lacrosse seriously. Oh, down yeah. There Lake Avenue, no question. Great program. Tough nice. angle there. That was Cam Howard with the left hand. And Shot. it will be UMBC Paul. Scott, more importantly, six seconds. Yeah. Six seconds left, so they save off that offensive run by Delaware. And it looks like... They'll have a one goal lead here in the third quarter. She's showing off. Animated. Essinger getting ready to fire it downfield. The defender. Intercept it. Look out. <laughs> All end right. To end action here. Bro. That's the end of the third quarter. It was a good one. An 8 4 halftime lead from UMBC. Tightens up considerably. They're on top 9 8 as we go into the fourth quarter. We're back right after this. Now's the time to get great Toyota value. You're gonna like the values on Toyota trucks. There's great deals now on full-size hundreds, including V8s and all new double cabs. Maybe you'd like a great deal on any tough Tacoma, including extra cabs and double cabs. Don't miss Toyota's nationwide sales event with legendary quality, incredible selection and value. Hey, what's not to like? Hi, everybody. Mark Nixon here with Dr. Kenneth Pepper with today's tip on shoulder injuries. Thanks, Mark. Shoulder injuries are common in contact sports. And while most injuries require only rest and ice, decreased range of motion may indicate a more serious problem. An orthopedic surgeon will determine whether rest, physical therapy, or surgery is necessary to get you back in the game. Today's tip was brought to you by the Advanced Centers for Orthopedic Surgery and Sports Medicine, keeping you in the game. Rage Cage, the next generation lacrosse goal is now available. Our patented one-piece folding design truly makes this full-size goal one of a kind. Rage Cage has steel tube construction with an ultra-durable powder-coated orange finish. Comes game ready, pre-strung with a three or four millimeter net, uniquely fastened to the goal. Sets up and breaks down in seconds. And since Rage Cage weighs only 42 pounds, you really can take it with you. To order your Rage Cage, see your favorite lacrosse dealer or log on to RageCage.com. Do you have a great idea for a new product? Every year, literally billions of dollars are spent on products new to the market, and this could be your year. Advent Product Development can help. Advent Product Development specializes in marketing new ideas and inventions, and we're interested in talking to you. 
If your idea qualifies, we can patent, trademark it for you, and take it to market. Or we can create a TV infomercial and sell your product directly to the public. Don't let your idea slip away. Call 888-347-7856 for your free inventor's kit. Call now. The Union Memorial Sports Medicine stats as we go into the fourth quarter. Again, face off 13 to 7, Keith, uh, Delaware. Mm. Alex Smith just really holding his own. Delaware able to close the gap with shot, 23 to 19, and win some more ground balls that quarter as well. But again, huge stat, Here extra many opportunities for uh, UNBC. Alex Smith wins the draw and then loses possession. They're going to call a moving Ooh. pick right okay. there. Wow. As the UMBC midfielder picked up that ball that was dropped by Smith, the defender was probably looking to clear out a man to give him an alley to go up, and he'd already picked the ball up. In, in a one-goal game, interesting that uh, UMBC is at five extra man possessions. Delaware hasn't had one yet in the game. Yeah. And now, they've only scored one time, but sure. boy, that can be, the penalties can be a deciding factor. And if UMBC were to come out on the short end of the stick, I'm sure that's a stat Don Zimmerman will point to is uh, not being very efficient EMO-wise. Mets fire misses wide left. Delaware retains possession. Hey Keith, you talked about the Virginia Towson game last weekend at Johnny United Stadium. Towson, one for seven or one for six mm. on EMO. If they just can one yeah. or two of those, that game doesn't go into overtime, and they've got a real nice win. They have a they had a five-one lead in that game. Yeah. And the Virginia's credit, they came back, and that well, showed me a lot. They're struggling to get anything going this year, and we on the road. Big win. Got Darso, Keith Mills, and Mark Dixon with you from. UMBC Stadium, good one today. UMBC and Delaware going at it. 9-8, UMBC on top early fourth quarter. Delaware in a circle offense right now, nobody on the crease. Now they replace the crease with some cuts, but they look like they're being very, very patient here. They're gonna be very methodical. They've worked hard to get this lead down to one for UMBC, and they're gonna work for a high percent shot. Oh, Richie has four goals. You can hear. Oh, they take the pass, and then Cam Howard Fired it in to tie the game at nine. Cam Howard that time with the stick fake. One of my teammates at John Thompson's, Chris Macon, officially called that move the sky whammy. As you put it out, you fake the pass, you get the defense to look one way, you fake shoot the, the other. It's ball fake. <laughs> it's a ball fake. <laughs> Beautiful job the by Cam camera Howard. bit. I, we all we all bit. Right? Yeah, you see the fake. The, the, more importantly, the defender bit, and that was the key. And uh, Howard with a tying goal. Wow, wow, what a comeback. How about the freshman Delaware. from Wilmington? He was injured, didn't play in the opener. He scored in every game since. Big contributor as a freshman, Cam Howard. Three-time uh, Rookie of the Week in the conference already. Nice double team there off the faceoff. Mustin originally won the faceoff with the sandwich, and then Delaware gets it back with a chance to take the lead. Wow, that's a great point, Keith, because you talk about so much that goes into the faceoff and the wings in that time, in that occasion, let Mustin down. Biggest lead of the game was 8-3 for UMBC. Cam Howard barely misses getting Delaware their uh, first lead of the game since 30 seconds into the contest when they were up one to nothing. It just misses in a nice, uh, nice undercut there, backdoor cut. Guys, whereas the first there, Munye, he's quick. Munye, yeah, we saw UMBC dominating the ball with the ball. Now we're seeing Delaware doing the same here. And it's been a game of runs, and this is not, now it's Delaware's turn. Six to one run over the last few minutes of this uh, the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And they've got this thing tied up at nine apiece. Joe Trench with it, number 24. Got to think back a couple of years ago, the emotional win, Tim Flanagan, oh, the UMBC goalie. I was just thinking it might be a big save that sparks a win here today from either one of these teams. And immediately thought back to Flanagan, who lost his father a week of, I believe, the Towers at the uh, West Point Army game, and came out and had a tremendous game. Jeff Clark picks it off. And now UMBC will have a chance to get the lead back. 9-9 nine, nine, tie, fourth quarter. If I'm UMBC, my offense hasn't had the ball in quite a few minutes. Just pull it out. Let's get everybody a touch back into a flow. Delaware's on a little bit of a run here. Let's try to stop the bleeding, if you will. And Jeff Clark, nice play, picking off that pass. Don Zimmerman very high on Jeff Clark. His senior out of Centerville, Maryland. Queen Anne's High School. Can play close defense, but playing more of a rope position these days at Longstick Midfield, making a big play, getting UMBC possession back with this game tied. And Jeff Rominski now from Bel Air, number 10 in white. He's getting some time. 
Another CM right. Yeah. Boy, Zim is emptying his bench today, playing a lot of guys. Highland with the shot. You know what? I like that guy. You know, his conference starts next week. You never know who he's going to need. You know, we've seen Salazar score a goal. We're seeing Rominski in right now. A lot of guys playing, getting them ready for the conference. Obviously, he wants to win this game, but looking ahead, great coaches can do that. They sure. can do both. Mundorf with four goals for UMBC. He's got possession right now. Allrich with four goals for Delaware. Oh, nice. Speaking of ball, oh, oh. beautiful. Jort, or number 20, James Highland. The fake got him a step or two, Keith, and then he finished. Yeah, Mark, I was just a, very similar to Howard here. Again, the fake sets everything up. And I like how Highland, see how he throws the fake, but he keeps his feet moving. He doesn't stop so his defender can get a clean check on him. And we talked about Highland's shooting prowess. Look at the form and the velocity he puts on his shot. Nice fake. And actually, the defender ducked. Yeah, almost like a hesitation sure. in basketball. Yeah, and it's a beautiful bounce shot. The stick side of Chris Collins. Great placement by James Highland. Highland, the sophomore from St. Mary's, gets the lead back for the Retrievers, 10-9, but here's Delaware winning the draw. You know, guys, a lot of young kids watch these games, you know, uh, proof again, you don't have to play the game at the same speed all the time. You know, you want to you want to stagger your speed sometimes, especially when you have the ball on offense. Keep the defense off balance. There's a nice save. Sepulak drops down, gets the stick on it. You have the Mets foul shot. Scott, looks like I had a pretty... Good look at it, Mark. It was a good look. Had nice velocity. Maybe shot it a little quicker than the Delaware coaching staff may have wanted yeah, yeah. to. But a lot of times, too, like you say, different speed, change the pace, catch people off guard. It all serves to help you get an advantage in some instances. Sepulak, though, was ready for that shot and made a nice save. Comes Highland again. See his quickness. Good look out in front. A smart play yep. by Cahill. Hey, force it. Yep. Let's, let's, hey, we got the lead. We have the ball. Unless you have a slam dunk in here, let's not. Yeah, I think he was his angle. By the time he caught yeah. the pass, Keith, he was almost even to the cage. Same play. That time, Delaware does, does a much better job of cutting off Cahill. Westerville buried in the double team, and maybe a oh, loose ball. Maybe a rookie mistake there, Mark, going into the teeth of the double team. Didn't have to. Hey, in high school, he can pull his way through those yeah. two guys, but not here. You gotta make up your mind. You gotta shoot that thing or dish it off. Dish it off. Either way, you're getting hit, but interesting, UMBC, or excuse me, Delaware defensively has changed up their assignment. Number 40, Ian Wright, who was guarding Mundorf in the first half, now on Westervelt. And number 18, Taylor Bloor checking into the game, and he's guarding Brendan Mundorf. I didn't see him, uh, in the first half team. Yeah, so didn't play at all. Some coaching Maybe that's changes. their adjustment they sure. made. Maybe it was a personnel adjustment. Paid off thus far, because uh, Mundorf sure. hasn't, doesn't have yeah. any points here. Not second. sure if injury yeah. caused that sure. change, but certainly a change. A little over nine minutes left to play in regulation. UMBC in the white with a 10-9 lead over Delaware. First midfield unit on for the Blue Hens. Ryan Overs has had a great day so far today. A goal and two assists. Yeah, he's created a lot. He really has. What do you look for out of your midfield, Mark? Is it, do you really worry about points? Obviously, any point you get from your midfield is, is, is appreciated, but certain guys obviously can do certain things. Is there, is, there a, is there a set formula you use? I think midfielders are a lot like uh, guards in basketball. You want them to be able to get up and down the field. You want them to be able to create and take offensive pressure off of your attack because if you have to respect up top, you can't guard down low as well. And UMBC gets a little careless with it. But backing everything up, they retained possession. Corey Warner was back there. And that was Cahill, a midfielder for UMBC, leading that charge. You're talking about guys that can get up and down the field. You want versatility and you want athleticism. And I'm a little biased being a former, former midfielder man, myself, yeah. but I think your best athletes are your playing both ends, right? Players yeah. are doing both things. Yeah. Of course, back in the old days, you had guys playing both ways in the midfield position. Shots more even now, guys. Delaware has cut the margin from the UMBC to just two. Westerveld was a little shaken up after he got hit by that double team, but he, he's back in there for the Retrievers. Game on the line. Here comes Mundor. Shot hit him right on the number. Oh. Oh. Hit right on the number nine. Oh, good. Now, passed it out to midfield. Boy, how about that for three great plays yeah. in a row by Chris Collins. Out. Looks like we're going to have an offside call. Collins getting hugs from his teammates back in front of the goal. And check out these saves. Mundorf going to the cage. Nice save. 
great stick positioning, gets his body there as well. And then the rebound shot. Ooh, mm, does great. a nice job to fight that off. That was a nasty little thing by Corey Warner. And then raked it out. <laughs> and then got it out, got it out of harm's way. And then not only that, was able to create a situation where Delaware wins possession back to, right. a, to an infraction by UMBC. Chris Collins stepping up, showing his leadership and his athletic ability in, this, in the cage. The second midfield group guys on the field now for Delaware, giving that first midfield unit a blow. Trench, Mounier, number 28, Deckelbaum. We've seen Mounier's speed. He can get a step on the defense. He's real quick. He was questionable for this game with a bad shoulder, but number 25, Bob Mounier. 6.50 left to play in the game in regulation. And it looks like a situational substitution right here. Court Nordhoff, an attackman in high school from Mount Hebron, checks in at midfield. We'll see if they may want to take advantage of a short stick matchup with his attackman skill. Is Joe Trench with it. Interesting substitution there. Nordhoff hasn't played yet. Echo no. bomb left hand. Oh, and Houston scores. Dan Deckelbaum, who hadn't scored a goal all year, the freshman from Owings Mill, finds a good time to fire one home, and we're tied at 10. Great job by Deckelbaum. You can see great size on him. Six foot, 200 pounds, and pulls his way in, beats Ooh. the check, and then adjusts himself to get his bearings and get his feet underneath of him. Beautiful whip shot, left-handed, ties this game up. So watch Luke Riley here. He just kind of got turned around and almost kind of Gave up on the play just to get me out of here, and Deckelbaum makes the goal to tie the game. 626 left, we're tied at 10. With today's low interest rates, there's never been a better time to come home to Baltimore County Savings Bank for a fixed rate home equity loan, for a line of credit, pay off high interest credit cards, make home improvements, or pay for college tuition. Baltimore County Savings Bank makes the application and settlement for your home equity loan quick and easy. Call or visit BaltoSavings.com for today's low rates. You'll get more from your home when you come home to Baltimore County Savings Bank. FDIC insured, equal housing lender. champions of the track. ABC2 brings you a fascinating glimpse into the local horse industry on Maryland Horse Breeders Thoroughbred Weekly, Sundays at noon on ABC2. If you'd like a copy of today's game, go to InsideLacrosse.com or call 410-583-8180. Inside Lacrosse, where players, coaches, and fans turn when knowledge is the name of the game. We're tied at 10, 626 left, big draw here. Mustin battling Alex Smith and Delaware. Another oh, try to clear. Another example of the wing play, Jordan Hall of Delaware took a shot in the head after that. Look out here. Face off. <laughs> Referee says, I can't see it. <laughs> well, that's a risk. I was wondering, you know, as a player, if you can pick it up, you've got to pick it up in that situation. Yeah. Don't leave it in the hands of the officials. Nice job by the UBC defense mm -hmm. checking down on the attackers for Delaware. But nice work for the officials. That's one thing. Communication is so very important between the officials. So make sure you get the right call. Don't have so much pride that if you, you're unsure about something, make a call that may be incorrect. Check with your partners. That's why there's three of you out there. Well, everything becomes uh, exaggerated now in this kind of game. Um, a mistake by UMBC. Number 11, Brian Tobin. And I tell you, we haven't seen the, all that many no, mistakes. No, not at all. Game, well so played game. No well coached doubt. teams, well played by the players. And, but an unlucky break for UMBC right here. UMBC had an 8-3 lead in this game. Delaware has fought back. We're tied at 10, fourth quarter, five and a half minutes to play in regulation. Brian Overs. Oh. Back on top. Can't hang on. Here come the Retrievers. Yeah, this Why is what, I'm sorry, Riley, Riley, who uh, who was involved in that last play, 
Nice defensive set there for him, or a good scoop for him, I should say. Delaware had the midfield that they wanted on the field. And I say that because anytime you get extra possession and extra goals out of your second midfield, that's just a bonus. And Delaware that time, well, and able to take advantage of uh, of their first midfield unit being out there. As you see Rutgers and Towson just underway, and the Scarlet Knights out to a one nothing lead on Towson. Under five minutes left. Each possession now so important with the score tied to 10. Tom Zack. Matt Gallagher. Oh, great pass. Then a, a check yeah. knocks the ball. Who's number 40, 40 for Delaware? Who was that? Ian Wright. Oh, uh, there's there. There's Number something for an Academy Award nomination got it right there, guys. Still no call. It's going to be UMBC possession. The hustle pays off right here in the corner. There you see the little dive action. Did it hit him? No, it did not hit him as it went out of bounds. And uh, UMBC retains possession. Great defense there on, on Warner right in front of the goal. Sandwich job. That was a beautiful look inside yeah, from your No doubt, Matt Gallagher with the feet. One thing we've seen this half piece, the Delaware defense hasn't allowed Mundorf yeah. to get it inside the way he was doing in the first half. Good point, Scott, good point. Good under point. four minutes. Nice adjustment by Bob Schilling while yeah. switching personnel. They can beat you some other way, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, he's Matt, thick. Matt, Matt Gallagher. Gallagher, yeah. And here comes Delaware. They have a fast break opportunity if they can push it. Just oh, wow. There's, there's an unforced error. Chad Holmes just running upfield. Yeah, Holmes Locked is the, the one who created the whole <coughs> near turnover. Watch number 34 here on Gallagher. Boom. Now you see it. Now you don't. Matt wondering, what, I, what should I do? Look for the ball or my stick? And you see Holmes just... Holmes recognized, he recognized a fast break and had his head up before the ball was in possession. 3.39 left to play in the fourth quarter. We're tied at 10. Toyota trucks have a history of higher resale value. Industry estimates say that five years from now, today's average vehicle will be worth about 35% of its purchase price. Toyota trucks could do a lot better. Estimates say that every one of these Toyota trucks will beat the average, some by thousands of dollars. So why lose money on an average truck? Choose a tough Toyota Tacoma or full-size Tundra instead. More choices, better choices, Toyota. Insurance companies and their lawyers will look out for the negligent driver, but you need someone to look out for you. Call Signs, Kirk, and Miles at 1-800-LAWYERS. Let's talk about it, because if you have a phone, you have a lawyer. If you have an idea for a product or an existing product, then 60 Second Solutions wants to talk to you. You've seen our products in thousands of commercials, and now we're seeking new and original ideas for marketing. If you have a product, idea, or invention, then don't wait. Call the toll-free number on your screen today. We'll send you our free inventor kit that explains how you can get your product in front of millions of potential customers. Isn't it time for your idea? Call the toll-free number on your screen today. Now here's a Rage Cage goalie face-off, Kevin Sefalek and Chris Collins. Both are playing steady. Collins has uh, some real spectacular saves. That three-shot sequence a couple minutes ago, keeping the retrievers at bay. UMBC possession, they'll look to take the lead here. Cahill, and he's going to draw a flag. So a free possession for UMBC, 320 left to play, a 10-10 tie. UMBC is going to have an extra man take full advantage of this uh, gimme situation here but make it take it and that'll draw the penalty so we're gonna have a hold situation here uh, Scott on number 20 for Delaware that's Jordan Hall as Cahill was making his way to the goal Hall went to lay a check missed on the check but impeded the forward progress of Cahill as he went to the cage therefore the flag and a 30-second extra man opportunity for UMBC right here. 30 seconds to glory for UMBC <laughs> if they can get the lead here. They're tied to 10, starting out in a 3-1-2 here. And there's the crossing oh, pass. They got through. Now there's Highland right there. 
Oh, Ooh, that looked like a pass to Mondorf. Yeah. It was looked like he was almost caught between the shot <laughs> and a pass. Maybe a little too unselfish there, guys, on three different occasions. And they call, they call it a pass. Yeah. It's not called a shot. Okay. And it's a turnover. Yeah, Delaware gets yeah. the ball. Wow. Interesting, has, uh, interesting call there. It looked like Hyland was trying to feed uh, Mundor yeah, going around. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Hyland throws that thing so quick, it's tough to tell what the I pass think it, I, think shot. I think they got it right, though. Yeah. yeah. Craig Grevy. Well, he's got an off right there. midfield, and we have another whistle. Delaware coaches are really animated. You see him right there in unison. <laughs> Bob Schilling, Law with the hat on. And they will retain possession. What'd you see, Mark? You know what the call, the call is here? Yeah, I was a little confused. There was so much activity around yeah. the box. I was thinking maybe an illegal well, substitution of some something, sort yeah. or an offside. But either way, Delaware retains possession. Two and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. Well, the series 9-8, all-time UMBC, yeah. and <laughs> going right down to the <laughs> final wow. minute. Certainly reflective of the score, no doubt about that. And again, guys, another extra man opportunity for UMBC, wasted without a shot. Good you point. UMBC point. packing that defense in a little bit. We have a final. Oh, hit. and a quick cutting score from Ryan Overs gives Delaware the lead with 204 left to play. They found a little seam right in front of the crease, and Overs made them pay. I tell you what, Ryan Overs has been making plays all day long for Delaware, and here, just a simple exchange behind the cage. The number five, Cam Howard, his third assist of the afternoon, and a streaking Ryan Overs getting a step on number 18, Luke Powell, and just tic-tac-toe, beautiful ball movement, and a nice shot by Ryan Overs, his second of the afternoon, gives U University of Delaware their first lead, guys, since 30 seconds into the game. Mm. Yeah, they were down 8-3. Delaware's come all the way back and lead 11-10, and a big possession there as they control the draw. Now under two minutes left to play. If Delaware can clear this ball and they get the ball into the offensive box, they're going to have to keep it in. So this is where UNBC is going to be all over Delaware. And if they go in with a long pole, nice timeout call by Bob Schillinglaw because if he goes in with a long pole, he's got to stay. He's got to stay. Yeah, and Bob recognized that, obviously, and sitting on a timeout, he tell you what, it wisely. Collins got dumped as he threw that yeah, pass up field, and he's <laughs> hobbling a little bit as he goes over and, and stops to have a word with the official. <laughs> hey, take care of me. <laughs> I tell you, goalies in lacrosse, when they're outside the crease, it's like a quarterback outside of the pocket. Ten seconds. We got 10 seconds to get it in. We want Bobby Munier, okay? We want the Jordan and Joe Trent. Speed, okay? Whoever's got the short stick, okay, Bobby, you've got it. You've got 10 seconds. Bring it all the way behind, okay? You're going to be behind the cage with it. Here's what I want. I don't want any crease. I want too many. I want Joe and I want um, 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 Jordan. You're going to be up in the corner here. Okay? So if we do lose it, we've got guys getting back. Okay? The attack. Let's have one guy, one guy uh, on the crease. You ready to peel off it? It's like a 1 3 2. Put Bobby behind. So keep keep it, it. They're going to pull it. They're going to pull it. They're going to pull it. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Hey, listen up. We're going to win this. Yeah, come on, baby. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Showing a little pause. It gave everyone an opportunity <laughs> to chime in. <laughs> and what are we going to do this and that and this and that? And a leader jumped in and said, hey, listen, we're going to win. We're going to win. Yeah, that's <laughs> bottom line. Don't forget our game of the week. Next week, we're back here at UMBC Stadium. The Retrievers Conference game against the Albany Great Dames. Next America Saturday, 1 o'clock. America East, uh, second game. If we get what we got today, hey, it's worth watching, guys. Definitely. Yes, this indeed. Is, this has been very, very entertaining. entertaining game. So Delaware said they, they only want to go with two middies here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Trench and Mounier. Trench and Mounier. Whoever has a short stick with you, number 25, Mounier. Well, they do have George Hall in the game, too, at midfield. The Canadian, probably for his okay. stick handling yep. ability. But we heard him say it's speed. Mounier with the speed. This yeah. is where you just want to run the defense ragged. And UMBC has, we heard the Delaware play, and say they're going to pull it. And there it is. Pulled the goaltender. And yeah. the ball gets out of the box. It goes over to UMBC. And the retrievers, they did it back. They did their job. Yep. Great defense by UMBC. Now we'll see if Don Zimmerman timeout. does not call a timeout. Yeah, absolutely. 122 left. UMBC timeout, and they'll try to set up the mark for what they hope is a tying goal. Scott, I'm sorry. Does the, right. same, does the same rules apply for the offense here down a goal? No. When the, the trailing team does not have to keep the ball in the right. box. The winning team Let's does. check in with Don it's Zimmerman in the UMBC it's bench. Until 9 o'clock, when they come across here. 
Goal ball game. Go shot. Cahill got it on goal. What a great win for Delaware. They were down 8-3. UMBC putting the pressure on late. Collins made the save. And Delaware's got their seventh win of the year, guys, in what was a great game. Uh, best we've had, Mark, and you got to give credit to Delaware's defense. All-out effort, the deflection on the Westerbelt pass, and the save at the end there by Collins again. No big-time series for Delaware. Go so back to Cahill's shot with about two seconds left on the clock, and Chris Collins, the junior oh. from Yorktown Heights, New York, comes up with the save. Well, I tell you what, UMBC had their chances, and how about Westerbelt? Keeping his presence, yeah. his composure for a freshman. Clock winding down, gets it underneath the Cahill. Cahill stretches out, he sells out, trying to get that save. So, excuse me, trying to get the goal. Chris Collins, experienced goalie, goes down low, makes the stop, preserves the win for his team. Tell you what, you can point to a lot of things, the, the last second save, but the defensive adjustments they made against Brendan Mundor for the second half may have had a lot to do with this win for Delaware. All week long, no one was... The Delaware's got to feel good about themselves, guys. Coming in, and UMBC, they played so well today, so hard. Don Zimmerman said this team has a great attitude. They worked so hard, and uh, just a great game. Ryan Overs, our uh, Papa John's player of the game, as you said, Mark, yeah, he was involved in a lot of things, a couple of goals, two assists. Here we see this goal really jump-started Delaware, the first goal of the third quarter to cut the lead to eight to five. And Ryan Overs, who just seemed to be in the middle of everything today, you know, Allrich had a lot of goals for Delaware, Collins with the saves, but Ryan Overs, a player who stepped up, our Papa John's player of the game. See the blue hands and retrievers congratulating each other on a terrific game and a great game for us to watch. I hope you had a chance to enjoy it with us. 11-10, our final score. We'll return right after this. The Toyota Lacrosse Game of the Week. Brought to you by Toyota. More choices, better choices. Get the feeling, Toyota. Well, discount liquors. You'll do well by well. And STX. Join the invasion.